Chris Stanley dedicating that song to himself because it's a shame about Chris. This is the Bennington Show on a post uh, World Series weekend, a post Aaron Rodgers weekend, and a post serial weekend. Um, Gail, did you watch any of the big sporting events? I did. I watched the Mets last night. Mm, let's go. Let's go, Mets go. Let's go, Mets go. It was pretty uh, nauseating, the whole thing. Like, I've, I, I'm not even a big Mets fan. I know a lot of Mets fans, Chris Stanley being probably the biggest. And Well, he's I Mets fan for life. I felt so sick. Like, well, well why can't you just feel it? good for uh, Kansas City? I don't know many Royals. Well, we'll never be Royals. That's for damn sure. <laughs> It don't run in our blood. Um, Hey, Louis J. Gomez coming in later on today. Uh, The real ass dude is going to be here. Oh, yeah. We love him. It's always a party when he arrives somewhere, (laughs) when he scopes in. Um, This says uh, from Tim Knight, what a dick of a fan is Hicks burning his hat between but because his team lost, they made it as an accomplishment. Look, here's the thing, Tim. We don't tell other people how to mourn, okay? Yeah. Gail uh, felt sick to her stomach. I felt apathy and a little bit happy as a Phillies fan. But overall, what do I care? You win the pennant. It's a big thing to win the pennant. Yes. Uh, Stanley wore his hat around. He enjoyed the postseason. You took it a little harder than most. What a bunch of disgusting, pathetic, loser, bums, fucking asshole Mets. If you want to check me out burning this goddamn Mets hat, go on Periscope Scope Bros. Because I lit the world on fire last night because of those pathetic, jerk-off Mets. Uh, Matt Harvey, you bum. The the, uh, name of his Periscope is Mets Choke, Lose World Series. (laughs) Come watch them burn. First of all, <laughs> that's the stupidest title. Come watch them burn. Clickbait yeah. it. Because you know why? Everyone need to see this thing because I I loved it. I loved laying that goddamn hat on fire. I was so, so. You know what? You are such a rebel uh, bringing a look like a pot from home, putting a hat on it, whispering so no one catches you, and then lighting it on fire. Yes, the cleanest dustpan I've ever seen in my life. Do you not dust? <laughs> no. The only thing I'm dusting up is burnt up dreams and hopes. from The only thing he's fan. dusting up is angel dust. <laughs> um, why whisper through the whole thing, you puss? <laughs> Lights were coming on in the, in the, in the houses next to me. As, I, this is I have so never seen up, yeah. these mats. What they did to me. So I had it on and I'm watching it and I'm laughing at my house. And then I hear this. They can suck my dirty dick. <laughs> and my chick goes like this to me. Why is this dick dirty? And I go, well, because he was a Skrillex the night before. And then we had to come report, no. uh, record the GPS show. He hasn't showered. He literally has a dirty dick. The best thing is the Mets had dirty dicks. And so did he. at one point he said, they're dirty dicks. And fucked me or something related to that. They and did. then later they could suck his dirty dick. It wasn't well thought out. Everybody had a dirty dick. <laughs> Yet, it was what you would call a subdued riot, uh, responsible anger. It was. You know, a, I've never heard a whispering rant before. <laughs> I actually found it much more menacing than screaming angry, Chris. I Whispery. would have. Yeah, I would have, but I've watched wrestling before. So I know what it's like when someone's going to go live in the rafters for three months. <laughs> you Hulk Hogan. You uh, have disrespected the warrior Hulk Hogan. Hogan, you think you're the Pentabi <laughs> They were the most boring <laughs> fucking promos in history. What's he saying? Uh, David, uh, Oakland Booty wants to talk to us. Go ahead, David. Hey, what's going on, guys? Remember, don't feel bad, man. Last year, the uh, Royal VTA, my children actually saw me throw my hat into the fucking fireplace. Their eyes got as big as possible. <laughs> What the fuck's going on? They've never seen me act like that. I don't know what it is about sports, buddies, but it's fucking great. It lets it, you know you're alive, Pepper. 
I don't believe it was on Periscope. You burned a hat. You in bought their merchandise and burned it. In front of your own children. Dad! All right, let me read some of the tweets that came in. Tweets. This, what, people are tweeting in a Periscope world. Strange, right? Uh, looks like Jinxie Stanley strikes again. Please become a, a Yankees fan, Jinxie. Um, did Stanley... Uh, Chris Stanley Bennington, the Perky Bennington, cry before going on Periscope. Mets fans, poser. Poser? No, I 32 years I gave that team. And this is why they fucking repay me by Terry Collins getting HQ bullied. HQ says, I'm relieved Stanley's troll bit as a lifelong Mets fan is finally over. Hashtag bad actor. I'd rather change that uh, hashtag to bad producer. <laughs> <laughs> More fitting. I'm ga- I'm guessing Piss Stanley is wearing a Yankees hat today. Hashtag hackbit. <laughs> that guy's a hack. Uh, all right, that's a good comeback. Mm. You got him. Hashtag hack shit. Uh, John Casey says, as a Royals fan, I would like to thank Chris Stanley for pulling for the Mets. Uh, he probably would have could have returned it if he had the receipt. Most stores have a 30-day policy. That would have been a better bit if you would have just taken your hat back and got your money. <laughs> I don't have my receipt. Uh, Store credit? It does the, smell like sweat. The original David Price says thing went right up with all the perk sweat grease. <laughs> all Mets hats are that flammable. Cooch said white and pepper just set himself on fire. That still would be burning. <laughs> 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 harsh but it really was from a performance point of view I'd have to give it an awful <laughs> I just can't have a whispering rant I play a little bit of it <sighs> Breathing. waiting for people to 32 out. fucking years 32 long fucked up years <laughs> <laughs> By the way, it's not 32 years. 32 since years. They went 32 years. years since he's been alive. Yes. This, <laughs> this is what happens. <laughs> this bullshit is what happens. <laughs> You're my scope, bros, right? You guys understand what this meant to me. You guys understand, right? <laughs> Oh, the big yellow face is good. <laughs> right, Scope Bros, you understood what the fucking Mets meant to me. And they fucking broke my heart. Pain in his eyes. These fucking losers. Terry Collins. Jacob DeGrom. Matt fucking Dark Knight Harvey. Ego having motherfucker. <laughs> Hit the share broadcast button if you want to watch this <laughs> oh, fucking that's so burn. stupid. No one does Sh- that. Hit that way. fucking share broadcast button. Because I want to watch it all fucking burn. All right, let's stop it for a second. They the beard me. and the yellow skin make it look like Planet of the Apes. <laughs> <laughs> I was very greasy and dirty. I hadn't yeah. showered in a couple of days at that well, point. Yeah, we know. Certainly. The dirty dick me do this because this is some fucking bullshit they fucked us up (laughs) they fucked us up scope bros the fucking Mets and Daniel fucking homophobe Murphy and that bum DeGrom DeGrom. and fucking niece and Reed and all that fucking bullshit bitching they're not fucking pitchers, dude. They're fucking pussies. The fucking Harvey had no place being in that ninth fucking <laughs> inning. Hold on. Let's stop it there for a second. The yeah. Anyone bitching about that? The entire stadium was screaming his name yeah. while the fucking Mets, by the way, were taking the collar in the fucking ninth. Th- three up, three down, all strikeouts. And everyone thought it was over. They wanted Harvey to come back. Yeah. It was, that's yeah. fucking fan fiction. They should have, they, they're not the manager Terry Collins is. And I, you, they went to the shot of Harvey saying, no way, no way, bro, no way, I'm the fucking dark knight. Matt Harvey's an asshole. He should be traded. 
care. I don't even care what happens to the Mets anymore. You Keep want them. you want your star pitcher to say, "Let me take this home." Yeah, and then you, you want your manager to be like, "Yo, dude, we're bringing in Familia. You fucking you you did great. You guys are the fucking goddamn ninth. Good work." Could you imagine how disappointing that would have been? Because it would have ended the same way. A fucking tears in a dustpan. <laughs> Two tears in a dustpan. <laughs> All right. Uh, oh, your the reviews are coming in. Okay. For you. Good. Um, well, nothing yet from the New York Times, and let's face it. Without the New York Times, you do not stay open in this town. That's so true. But an early review from the best show, Tom Sharpling. <gasps> What's Sharpling um, want? To be fair, Chris Stanley's camera work on his hat burning video was great, but could have done without the dustpan and water. <laughs> <laughs> it did take the edge away yeah. a little bit. It came across as a little pussy. <laughs> no way. I lit that fucker up. Go ahead. You, you keep playing it without us, Joe. Go ahead. Fucking mess. Fucking pathetic. Pathetic fucking losers. Look how he's looking at Rusty as he gets in trouble for the fire. <laughs> what a fucking joke. What a pathetic fucking joke. Keep hitting it, because I'm going to light this fucker up. <laughs> there it is. There's that precious Mets hat. Nothing to it. Watch no your dramatic fucking burn, thing. It's just on fire all this going to happen. Doesn't start on his no. head. No. Fucking Daniel Murphy. Now it's gone. That fucking cunt. <laughs> Fuck the Mets and their fucking dirty little dicks. <laughs> <laughs> you heard me? <laughs> <laughs> Fuck them. <laughs> Fuck these sons of bitches. Fuck these cocksuckers. They fucking ruined what should have been the best fucking night of my life. <laughs> they go down one four, win? Five fucking games. Two wins. That's what they did. Second win against three losses. <laughs> the best night of his do, life. Fucking lose like fucking been. bitches. <laughs> well, here we go. <laughs> here we go. Fuck you, New York. <laughs> Fuck you, New York Mets. <laughs> Fuck you, New York <laughs> Fuck you, New York. There it goes. <laughs> there it goes. Go down. The there it is. I swear at my house, I thought it was a frying pan. <laughs> <laughs> Did you just buy that for the bird? Because it's, <laughs> it's brand new. It's Bird's silver. <laughs> it's a family heirloom. I just want to see it all burn, dog. <laughs> oh, Joker. Why? I just want to see it all fucking burn. There's the Mets. There they are. No. Fuck you. Just hit that share broadcast button. <laughs> Fuck you. New York Mets. Fuck you, Terry Collins. Suck my dirty cock. <laughs> Fuck. His dirty cock. <laughs> I guess That's he got it. that from the Mets. That's the Mets. That's the fucking Mets. Wordy Turdy says, this is what happens when you fuck a stranger <laughs> in the ass. That's it. This was everything. And now it's just a smoldering pile of fucking ash. All right. <laughs> Stop here for a second. Jim had said, <laughs> he just said, share birdcast. <laughs> <laughs> Get that fat, dirty, greasy tongue out of the way, said Dor. Oh, my God. <laughs> share that birdcast. <laughs> share it. Share it, Scopro. Share the birdcast. <laughs> He's got a dirty Harvey. <laughs> He's got a dirty cock, but an amazingly clean dustpan. <laughs> Danny says, um, no, this is from Jason. The video would have been better if he would have left the hat on. Boy <laughs> <laughs> I'm burning my own skin right now. <laughs> you don't tell me what to do. I am the one who says I tell me what to do. New York Mets. Wait, I sounded like Luna Vachon. Oh, New I, York Mets. That was a sweet. You're the last one who remembers her. I know. God I love her. sweet Luna. Sweet, sweet Luna. <laughs> I don't know if she's ever been called that, but she My should. dirty cock. <laughs> New York Mets. That's what they did. Your dirty <laughs> My scope bros will be all over you, Matt Harvey. Matt Scarfy Harvey. 
<laughs> it was the dumbest, worst shit ever. Loved it. Well, there's a second I'm going to burn that hat. If only you had sweeped off your dirty dick into that dustpan. No. Oh. <laughs> That's the cleanest dustpan I've ever seen. It looks like a mirror. <laughs> Ralph says it's been 32 <laughs> fucked up years, and I don't think the Mets had anything to do with that. <laughs> <laughs> 32 fucked up years describing your own life <laughs> your own life look New York Mets I was born in a crossfire hurricane <laughs> and I howled at my ma in a driving rain <laughs> this is a fucking WWE character that doesn't get over I love burn that hat so much. You should have been like this. He'll be dealing with Judas. <laughs> <laughs> His face as he lights it on fire. Uh, Sponge Steve uh, says Chris Stanley is the reason no one respects New York sports fans. No one should respect New York f- sports fans or Chicago sports no. fans or Los Angeles. If you're a sports fan, you're kind of a dick. Are any of them yeah. respectable? Fucking... Joe walking around happier today than some guys that he's never met before won yesterday and wearing a Vikings uh, helmet. Yeah. Is everything that's crazy about being a sports fan. They're my friends. It's moronic. <laughs> we did this. By the way, none of the guys that were in that game are from Minnesota. No. None of them. Why do they make you feel pride? <laughs> but we are a part of it. How? Um, you don't even live there anymore. You hate Minnesota so much you left. <laughs> I'm, well, I mean, you know, I feel like I'm a part of the team. Like when they win, I win, you know? Yeah, that's <laughs> what we're saying. It doesn't make sense. Anything of sports is leaving reality at all. And I'm saying that as a sports fan. And that's why they wear their jerseys. <laughs> I'm part of the team. I was switching back and forth. And um, uh, to the, to the football game. And I see fucking Rogers on the re- on the run. I just go like, "That's good. Get that motherfucker." Now <laughs> I don't have anything against him. I think he's an incredibly talented player. I just like seeing someone talented having a bad night. He threw for a big seventy-seven yards. Look, I believed in your corporate logo <laughs> for so long. Thirty-two long years. You haven't even been a Mets fan 32 days. Now I retire to the darkness Live from whence I came. <laughs> what? This bit is going so wrong. <laughs> and I think I just saw a patrol car. So if they see this dustpan of hat burning, <laughs> I could be in the tombs for 24 hours. At least. Probably raped in my ass. <laughs> With a dirty, dirty dick. <laughs> he's obsessed with dirty dicks. The night before, when he got the Skrillex tickets, he's making out with a guy, and all they're talking about is their erections. I don't remember making out with any guys. Yeah, it was Zito's friend. Oh, God. Ew. By the way, when Zito worked here, fucking him and Chris did not get along. Chris wouldn't give him a bit of work. Mm-mm. Hated him, asked us to fire him all the time. Yeah. And now they run around town together. He's the location producer for Smoking with Chris. What happened? What changed with your relationship? He's getting me into free shows. You don't even like Skrillex. You don't like the Mets or Skrillex. Well, I don't like the Mets anymore. And you jumped on both bandwagons. (laughs) I've never been to a Skrillex show. I wanted to show the Scope Bros what it it was like to be at a Skrillex show. You looked like you were dead mother. You were twice the age of everyone in the Skrillex show. I felt very old. I was the only person with a beard, that's for sure. And there was a bunch of just mostly half-naked Asian girls everywhere. They looked like children all around you. Very young. There was a very young demographic. And they were all very drunk and sweaty. It's a tween show. Yeah, it really was a tweener event. Yeah. Oh, yeah. A lot of youngsters. What's Skrillex's big hit that he was playing? I think it was a bangerang. Like, what is this, a commercial? <laughs> oh, he, he makes commercial rock. You couldn't get anywhere near him, huh? Oh, no, that, that place was just packed the fuck out. It was but crazy. But they, you know, I was like, oh, he's a DJ, he doesn't have to pay for a band. But they having lights has got to set them back a few bucks. 
Yeah. Those, those guys get paid tens of thousands of dollars, the lightning effect guys. I'm sure. I mean, it would cost you that to rent that fucking gear. I'm in a band. Uh, I play lights. Mm. Kind of in a band, I guess. Uh, Mainly mm. primaries. I play, <laughs> right now I'm playing computer. And I travel around the world acting like I'm Swedish. This is a big hit. This is like a gum commercial. Yeah, it's, I think it's uh, for um, five gum. Does he ever do a thing like, oh, ladies and gentlemen, I want to bring a friend up, Dead Mouse, and everyone goes crazy as <laughs> Dead Mouse walks out? I think they hate each other. And then they just open their laptops next to each other. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Is this any different than the electronic music that was happening in the 90s? Is it really that much different? I don't think so. I mean, better. I mean, it sounds pretty similar. It's better. It's a lot better. More drops, I know that. Yeah. Like instead of just one, several. <laughs> you ever like if you ever meet Dead Mouse, go like this. Well, if it isn't Dead Mouth Five, how are you, my friend? <laughs> you Dead know that's Ma- not my name. Dead Mouth Five. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, that's enough of that fucking shit. I'd rather hear Chris's whispering rant. You son of a bitch. <laughs> Comforting. <laughs> Because uh, lulls went to sleep with that. Ladies and gentlemen, I cannot do my show. I left my laptop at home. <laughs> if, everyone, no! if, if anyone else has a laptop. <laughs> I have a tablet. All right. I guess I'll use that. That's them going to Q-Stick. <laughs> it comes out with a tablet. Beautiful. It's touchscreen instead. Beautiful. <laughs> People are just screaming and fucking going nuts. Yeah, everyone there was just fucking losing their minds. Yeah, they were. I saw them. A lot of a uh, lot of sexy costumes. Yeah, a lot of sexy, in, like sexy devils, because it was like a it was called the Pier of Fear where I was at. So uh, it was a lot of sexy devils. I nurses. can't believe it's not at Universal when you do something that's stupid. What was the big uh, Ulysses S. Grant um, picture controversy? So you know the photo of him in the Civil War. It's a very famous photo and he's on horseback yeah. and he's standing and the field is behind him. All the soldiers. It's completely faked. It can't be faked. It was in my textbook in fucking fifth grade. It was in like every history textbook I ever had. And they're saying now it's a composite of at least three or four different images. It's not even real at all. Pre Photoshop. What, what year did all this take place though? All the fakeness. I don't know. It was, it was during, I believe, because they said it was used as kind of a, almost like an ad or something. Like they were like, see how great this battle was. But it, they took a picture of him, another dude on horseback, another thing, and they had put it all together into one. It's not even real. I had no idea of this. It's ridiculous. And wasn't he your favorite of all the presidents? Yes. Yeah, he was my favorite. He's my favorite president. Because Grant. he drank and had a beard. Yeah, and he, and he won the Civil War. And he was barrel chested. <laughs> I love the barrel chest. <laughs> he does have a great barrel chest. Yeah. I think he ended up homeless after the presidency as well. No, he, no, didn't. he didn't. Oh. Come on. How could that be true? All right, now I'm going to burn a 50 on Periscope now. <laughs> I've never heard luck. of that before. So we've always had Photoshopping while everyone's complaining. I, uh, yeah, I guess we always <laughs> did. But remember they basically said that the Hiroshima picture was faked, that the photographer put it together, those guys putting up the flag, the, the flag yeah. That, that was, it was, like, completely orchestrated, the whole yeah, thing? Yeah, the whole and- thing was orchestrated. No, there wasn't four guys who were just sitting around going, hey, we need to get this flag up. <laughs> this is important to us. Yeah. I like the idea of they're just like, we really just need one solid image to sell this whole thing up. It's really going to get everyone behind this. Well, I mean, the, I mean, both those things were done to sell the war effort. You know, it's marketing. You know what I mean, it's no different than any other kind of marketing. 
And we, and we always did that. But even if you look at it, like you see how crisp that background is. Yeah. The f- like the middle ground is kind of weirdly fuzzy. You know that that probably couldn't have focused that way. Okay. At the time I thought so, Gail. Stop <laughs> pounding me on this. I made a mistake. I should have <laughs> done my due diligence. I should have been a kid detective. What are I raised my hand and said, sister, this isn't real. What are those teepees there? Those probably were just added in. I remember the time. That I would go like this, sister, can I go to the bathroom? And I always hear the same thing. This is a public school. And I've told you many times, <laughs> my name is Mrs. Bennett Demange. <laughs> I have children. <laughs> Stop calling me sister. And I go, sister. no, I meant it in a black woman type of way. Like not you, a Catholic. Like you, my sister. Yeah. I would like to recreate the same picture with Chris Stanley uh, standing in front of fallen Mets fans with his arm in a sling. <laughs> Easily, I'd and, like to create the same picture, but with a better thigh gap for you. I right. know he's a little chubsy ubsy there. You that gap? Like to, yeah, I like to see a V going. We really want to get this war effort yeah. going. Well, <laughs> also in the original picture, the horse was shitting, and they had to <laughs> take why. that. Out. Yeah, <laughs> but that was actually one of the clues I think uh, that had them looking into it is because he had a horse. That was he always rode, and they were like, "Hey, that's not the horse. It's like a different coloring." Well, that's they, how they could... a lot of people don't know this, but Grant was the first president ever to go into the desert with a horse with no name. Really? Wow. And um, <laughs> I think it felt good to be out of the rain. You know, I guess everywhere huh. but the desert. In the desert, there you can't remember your name because there ain't no one to give you no name. So, who doesn't have a name? Them, the horse or you? <laughs> I'm confused. Here's the thing. Why it's, does no one have a name? First of all, it's up to you to fucking name your horse. He's like, not going to tell you. Yeah. Because really, I got a dog with no name, and then I started calling him Buddy. <laughs> bought it. <laughs> hey, Buddy. Hey, Buddy. Hey, Buddy. Where's my Buddy going? <laughs> I'll bet that Buddy wants a bone. Um, this horse doesn't seem to have a name. <laughs> yes, it's up to you. The New York Post did something um, uh, that I have never seen them do before with young Jimmy Fallon. They're basically calling Fallon an alcoholic in their piece, and they go around saying that he's drunk everywhere, and that's why he hurts himself all the time. It seems malicious to print that. It seems like it's not your place. If you're, if you're, okay, if you're reporting on a specific story, like Jimmy Fallon did this and this is what happened, but to say, well, they give a lot of specifics in there. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but we surmise. They actually means- went to his bartender in the Hamptons who says that he's always fucked up. Oh my God. That's a, sh- that's a terrible bartender. No, they, yeah, I agree. I agree. But they, all it took was a tip probably. <laughs> but see, here's the thing. They said he's a happy drunk. And a fun drunk, you know. Yes. So who's to say? I was at a bar once where oh, Jimmy. Oh, that shocks me. <laughs> <laughs> and he was he was pretty happy. He was in a good mood. Um. Well, yeah. I mean, he <laughs> does have that reputation. Yeah. Like most of us have that sure. reputation. But who puts it in the paper? It seems wrong well yeah I, I think the first sign that you have a problem is when you're playing giant beer pong on your national television <laughs> show yeah that seems like a problem but see that's the thing if you say someone sure seems to be drinking too much we've already read enough of the stories is there is no rolling it back there is no just going to wine spritzers once you have a problem yeah you know the cat has been fucked as they like to say <laughs> in the bible say that. yeah <laughs> But I've never seen them, like, just flat out accuse a guy who, you know, I mean, he's not hanging around in the street, running around acting like a nut. He shows up in a suit. He works hard. And they say one of the reasons they're blaming on the job because he's there for 12 hours a day. Yeah, he's working hard and playing hard. Dude, first of all, you don't have to be there for 12 hours a day. It looks like you need to be there an hour a day. <laughs> yeah. That should be fine. Maybe yeah. an hour 10. But all of this, does this come out of the finger injuries? He's had multiple injuries to his hands. Yeah, that's that's how he's really fucked it up. You he know, he's the... running around bruising himself. Either that or his mom's beating him. I don't know which is yeah. happening. 
<laughs> well, he had the, the Jaeger incident where he tripped, smashed yeah. a bottle of Jaeger. Then there was the one before that sounded very, the one where he almost ripped his pinky off. Or no, his, his ring finger. And he said he tripped, caught his wedding ring on something. It sounded like one of those excuses. Hey, here's the thing. It was a freak accident, really. <laughs> yeah, I just got a text from the New York Post. They'd like to hire you as a cub reporter. They said, you are following the story perfectly. And they also said that everyone at NBC has been talking about it, and now, now they're starting to really talk about it. And everyone's like, there's not a problem yet, but they, they're they keeping an eye on Fallon. Like, they're just fucking outing everyone. All right, BL texted me that said, I won't bother you anymore. Thanks again for a, a wonderful life. Now, how many people <laughs> think that that's her last text to me? Nope. She's not gone. What kind of odds could I get if we make this bet? <laughs> you open the door. Hey, your paper's out here. She's out there. Forgot all about you, Gail. <laughs> she's a city fish, but she's loving it up here. Here, plug me in. Sure. Um, all right, here's some of the things that they are giving as the proof. They got two inside sources. They've got the three bizarre accidents that Gail has brought up. Yes. Um, that's the tooth and the two finger accidents. There's a 2014 bar brawl that he was in um, that he was belting out tunes on a sidewalk after bar night. And he was doing shots before benefit. <laughs> now, <laughs> also, if you remember the 40th anniversary party. Uh, with SNL, that no matter how big the singer, he did not get off stage and kept singing along with yes some of the great singers. That's maybe somebody not making the best decision. Jimmy, let Stevie Wonder do a solo. <laughs> no! I thought the night that he sang with Billy Joel proved that he had a giant fucking problem. <laughs> <laughs> Saturday I'm at your party just going fucking crazy I'll tell you another thing that looks like a problem to me friends with Justin Timberlake yeah yeah, he's a party boy also being at work for 12 hours a day when you have a one hour job now most people have an 8 hour job that would be like you staying at work 70 hours a day <laughs> you don't need to be there that much punch out go home Go home and have a nice stiff drink. Yeah. Oh, wait, that's Okay, that's, that's, that's the part feeding. of the thing. Oh, no. Yeah, that's the feeding. I mean, he seems fun, that's for sure. He's a, he's delightful. He's a fun Bobby type. People, yeah, he is fun Bobby. People will go on his show and try to, you know, shoot a bow and arrow with a hot dog attached to the end of it into a jar of mustard. And by the way, the people that I'm saying that will do that. That's the bit that Daniel Day Lewis did when he did the show. Oh, no. Yeah. <laughs> That's no way to treat. Never brought up the movie. Never brought no. up. Yeah. <laughs> By the way, did you see the movie Lincoln with Daniel Day Lewis? I did. Do you remember the scene where he goes like this? Did we uh, get the fake Grant picture finished? <laughs> <laughs> Make sure you Photoshop it. If I had been listening closer. Yeah. My favorite part is when Lincoln said this. <laughs> Everyone was upset about that Lincoln impression. And yet it they, was well researched. They handed him the Oscar. They did. The second he took the role, they go, OK, and here's your script. Here's your script and your Oscar. <laughs> you won somehow. <laughs> It's really not so much that he's a good actor, it's that everyone else is so bad. I mean, who else are you going to give it to? The Rock? It's not going to be The Rock. Maybe someday. Someone told me that the front runner for this year's Oscar is now they're deeming The Martian. This is Come how on. fucking crazy we are. Really? Yeah. I didn't see The Martian. I didn't think it would have been that type of... Uh... It's out of this world. <laughs> see what he did there? A lot of big stars. Yeah. It's going to be exciting. It's going to be an exciting year for the Oscars. Is Daniel Day in anything? No, but they're Damn still it. thinking about it. So for that reason, they're only going to give him Best Supporting. Good for him. And <laughs> all the Oscars go to Daniel Day-Lewis. DDO. Shakespeare once said. He's so good. 
all the world's a stage. So true. How did they make me hate movies in my lifetime? They made me go from loving movies to hating movies. Because it's, it's in like two categories now. Your blockbuster franchise bullshit or like Oscar bait. I you're, can't see you over the hat smoke. What are you saying? It's so smoky in here. It's following you me around. put it out. The fire well, and Only you can prevent hat fires. <laughs> I can also and- start them. <laughs> I love how the Mets fans turn on all their fucking heroes. So quickly. They Heroes, do. more like zeros. Cespedes, you're a bum. Hold on. First of all, <laughs> don't step on your great line. That Heroes, the zeros is perfect. So good. I never yeah. would have thought of that. Never. Yeah. If I had a million years, I wouldn't come up with that. Matt Harvey's face down in a puddle Let's, of his own vomit. Somewhere. All right. I'm looking at what <laughs> some, um, n- some New Yorkers, famous New Yorkers, uh, has said, tweeted out about the Mets. Here's Jerry Seinfeld said, good, I'm back to the Yankees like always. Uh, Paul Simon said, Mets blow like Art Garfunkel. What? And Whoa. then... This means two Ouch. different people. This is where though Jimmy Fallon just wrote, shimmy got bop, he got bop, he bop, bop. And then <laughs> later, I'm sad, I'm going to kill myself. No, what? Jimmy! He must be masking. He must be masking his pain or self-medicating. Someone's got to get him off his Twitter account when he's been drinking this much. <laughs> See, that's his way of dealing yes. with things. To get him Hide off it. The account. <laughs> Sweep it under the rug. That he was drinking Jägermeister at his age. Really, should just, this should be the number one thing. Jägermeister is a young man's fucking booze. So what age is the last Jäger? 26 years old is the last time you can drink a Jäger. What? Take a shot, Jägermeister. I would say 21, 22. Yeah, I would it's even like go Boogie 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 Avenue. right after college. I would say about the same time that you have to stop using party as a verb. Oh, I'll never do that. <laughs> yeah. I actually still say we're going to party hardy. <laughs> I'll say that. <laughs> And if and anyone asks me how I'm doing, I always just go party good, party good. <laughs> now back to your thing about right after college. What if you're a graduate student? Can you still keep doing Jaeger bombs? Graduate student, it's okay because you're still in that college academic life. And can you still do it if you own the Dallas Mavericks and you're on your own plane? Only if you he, own the Dallas Mavericks. He seems like a Jaeger bomb type of guy. <laughs> Jaeger material. That comes out of his faucet at his house, I think. <laughs> That's so oh, if I cool. was rich. <laughs> it's good to be king. Yeah, just hit the the Jaeger tap. Jaeger tap? Oh, no. Please. <laughs> I thought we'd do Jaeger bombs and then eat an entire ham each. How's that sound? <laughs> That's how well I'm doing with the money. Let's go! Ham really sets off the spiciness. <laughs> the blandness of the ham complements it so well. Oh, I soak the ham in the Jaeger. Mm. It gives her. It gives it a Jaegery ham taste that I find is just exquisite when I'm listening to Dave Matthews. <laughs> All you have is Matthews, Dave Matthews, the fucking play, Jaeger bombs, entourage on mute on your fucking big screen at all times. Sounds great. Why aren't you wearing your smoldering cap, Chris? That thing is burnt somewhere on a Long Island City street. Fuck that hat. By the way, I don't believe that you live in Long Island City. Why not? I think it's on the other side of the bridge. No, Long Island City is... I, I'm on the border of a story of Long Island City. I was in Long Island City last night. But where do you live? On the border. I'm, I'm on the Astoria side of Long Island City. You story. live in Astoria, yeah, then. that's Astoria. But, yeah, people can't... And, and fucking Buffalo don't say, I'm Canadian, really, because I live on the border. <laughs> right. The border separates. But I jumped the border to go burn the hat, because Long Island City is a little more desolate. Then they'll never find you. That does they don't know me here. <laughs> it's a little more desolate 15 years ago. Now it's much <laughs> fucking busier than Astoria. Now there's high rises. <laughs> um, does by the way, if, in a, in like if there was a Skrillex album, does it have someone listed as a writer? I th- I think it, he's the writer with like a bunch of other people. Like today, these days, any. Anything that goes number one, anything that's hot in Billboard charts has like five or six writers on it. 
It's ridiculous. And Billboard, like, someone looked at all the Billboard charts, and, like, 50 years ago, it was, like, one or two writers at the most. Now, it's, like, five writers for every hit song. If it's a song that goes to number one, it's there's five writers on it. And one of them is always Dick Clark. Yeah. <laughs> Constantly. <laughs> well, that goes to show you that it's a corporate thing, because... There was a time that Dick Clark would just slap his name on before he played it. Right. Like, I feel like that it's been a business of songwriting for a long time. There's certainly been that element, but it, it's so removed now. Well, the producer l- puts himself as a songwriter. In the old right. days, you would not have uh, the producer throwing his name on as if he was a songwriter. And that happens all the time now. There's this one guy called Max Martin who has, like, 21 number one hits. He's like, it's it's... Lennon and McCartney, and then this guy, and but he had, but he, on all those songs that he's on, it's all for random different artists, and there's just a bunch of other people on the songs with him. But he's getting credited with all these number one hits. Yeah, what are they pop that's stars? What I'm saying. Yeah, pop stars like Taylor Swift. He, he wrote that weekend song. He wrote "Hit Me Baby One More Time." Like he's it's, he's all he's written with Taylor Swift. Yes, mm-hmm. you pointed that out once. <laughs> T Swift. <laughs> I know. Another person that he's written with is also Taylor Swift. <laughs> From the first thing that I said. Rihanna. Look, Hot Hat, your fucking ability to tell the story is nil. <laughs> well, you know, like if a movie's bad, if it has nine fucking guys' names on it, because it's, yeah. it's, it's made the rounds. And I would say the same for a song. And by the way, it's the way, reason why all the pop songs sound the same. Yeah, like, Bitch Better Have My Money has, like, five people on it. And that's... That's, that's hard to believe. Those are the only lyrics. But one, of the, one of the ones is the bitch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because I felt like, you know what? She deserves to be here, too. <laughs> this song wouldn't happen yeah. if it wasn't for her. I'm doing... A, I'm working on a song called right now called Hot Hat from the border of Long Island City and Astoria. <laughs> Let me get a writing credit on that. <laughs> you got it. Can I get a credit? <laughs> if I can get a writing credit on yours. <laughs> oh, please. Cre- Chris, credit? Yeah, please. What about me? Can I have one? Yeah, sure, whatever. Yeah. You right. know what? Get over here. You're going to be on this <laughs> All right. Yeah. Get over here. Songwriting buddies. buddies. By the way. Songwriting buddies. Songwriting buddies. buddies. <laughs> Wait, I think right, we got a hit. There's James Brolin. Walking past the man who lays down at night next to Miss Barbara Streisand. Mm. Imagine. Imagine that world. This is the way when she's trying to wake you up, she wakes you up like this. Memories. Hit the snooze, please. Like the corner of my mind. 50 more minutes, please. I would wake her up like this. Hello, gorgeous. Hello, gorgeous. Uh, And then his son is the famous Brolin. Yes, Josh. 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 (laughs) Josh. You're Josh. So, literally, every time he has a dinner, everybody is more famous than him. <laughs> <laughs> and that's saying something, too. Yeah. Yeah. The oh, least yeah. famous person at this table. It's odd. And I've had a career. Get some work for yourself, dog. All right. Why well, would talk that way? <laughs> There's no one in the family who would talk that it's way. Per- <laughs> no, I was there. I talked that way. What? Chris <laughs> Brolin? Why are you got your sling off? The whole thing about having a sling, tight, tighten it up. I got he t- just loosens it every once in a while. You are you you are using that arm so much; it's insane. But I saw my doctor today, and he said, "Yeah, he, they tested the mobility of it, and he was freaked the fuck out how much my arm's able to move." He's like, "You, dude, you have to fucking stop using right, your arm." Let, let's just go over this fact. So <laughs> it's the exact opposite of what a doctor would say. Yes, a doctor <laughs> operates so that you will have mobility. Yes, yeah. your doctor says that you have too much mobility. He, he's, all right, so genetically. Yeah, my joints are so fucking loosey goosey that they had they had to go into my shoulder and tighten it up. Like they had to tighten the fuck out of it. He's like one of those inflatable arm men outside <laughs> well, of a, get you a job car doing lot. That. Yeah, <laughs> I, I can only do the left side at this point. <laughs> Why? If you take that sling off, your fucking arm will just start whipping around in the in the wind. No, they, they said that they'll have to go back in if I don't start really not using this thing at all. Because they said that the, the the arm is already still too loose from his... Opinion. He says, unless I really start not using it. <laughs> this is how fucking the exact opposite <laughs> of the world you are. I shouldn't be using this arm at all, is what the gist of it was. <laughs> it, but it, it, it alerted, it like made me f- feel weird that the doctor was so weirded out. What, what was the reason that you went and had this operation where they gave you the eight anchors? 
I uh, three years ago I slipped in the rain, caught myself with my right arm, arm popped out of the socket. Yeah. I popped so it back in. You're trying to tell us that you Jimmy Fallon three years <laughs> ago. Okay. I found. I had a couple. So yeah, it popped out of the socket. I popped it back in. <laughs> Thought nothing of it. I was like, all right, my arm's still moving. Everything's cool. Then a few years later, it started dislocating randomly. And then I was on the beach one day, threw a football, and dropped to the fucking ground in pain as my arm popped out of the socket. When, when that happens, you should be a fucking QB for the Eagles. <laughs> Sam Bradford, they said that he fucking injured himself watching tape. He said, I don't know how it happened. I guess he jerked his head too fast. <laughs> and oh, and that's like, oh, God. Uh, so, yeah. so numb. Yeah, and then he had a popcorn injury. Oh, God. What's that? Just getting some popcorn and fucking dislocated his shoulder. Piece of fucking garbage. I feel your pain, Trade it for your future. <laughs> That's where I'm at now. My mobility's great, but it shouldn't be as good as it is. And he's That's just shocked he's never it seen... great if it's too... If it's all over the place. Yeah, it's your okay. doctor's saying he's never seen someone so limber. Basically, a week after getting a surgery, or 10 days, or whatever. So, Stretch Armstrong, when are you going to be okay? So they say in three more weeks I'll get out of the sling, but then I have months. Oh my of, god! Yeah, but in, uh, I'll have months of physical therapy ahead of me. What well, kind of physical therapy? Not doing stuff? I guess. Yeah, or just <laughs> slowly moving my arm. I'm gonna put this sandwich in front of you. I want you to not grab it. <laughs> oh, that's impossible. <laughs> Can't that promise never anything. Fucking happen. All right, it's gone. I already <laughs> <had> it. <laughs> Too delicious looking. <laughs> See, this is week two of the sling. Uh, there's a thing up on CNN, Obama touting early prison release plan. The first murder, everybody's going to come running back to you, Obama, and say that you, you're responsible. Yep. You ought to try to get yourself an early release plan for being <laughs> president. We're literally a year like this week from getting a new president. That's insane. That's crazy, right? That's insane. It already feels like it's been going on so long. I know. And Trump has already lost his lead. He's uh, yeah. tied with Ben Carson, which I'm amazed. I mean, I get the, the Trump thing. I don't say, see how a human being could say, I'm a Ben Carson man. I, I don't understand <laughs> it. I don't understand it. It's so bizarre. Trump is like a known brand. Ben Carson's come out of nowhere with real crazy talk. Like, he makes Trump look sane with Ben Carson's crazy stories. I would stories. agree with that. Yeah. The stories from the childhood, throwing rocks, getting stabbed, getting into fucking gunfights or whatever. He's a madman. Because I don't even think, at least Trump, I feel like he's a character. Well, he's you, playing uh, up something. But you also feel like Trump can approach this thing from, like, a business point of view. Yes. What the fuck is Ben Carson going to do? And then when everyone says to me, um, oh, he's a doctor, that uh, he's smart. But if you're running any kind of grifts, you always target doctors and dentists because they have no street sense whatsoever, that they've studied the one thing their whole life. Is that true? Yes. I've never heard that before. happens all the time. So when uh, people, um, because they have extra money yeah, and they have to put it places, so every time everyone has that, Swampland in Florida, they always go after, uh, you know, eight or ten doctors, eight or ten dentists. Because these guys are the geek guys from school. Yeah, and they've been busy with their studies their yeah. entire life. They never learned how to read people. They just don't have street sense. There's uh, hospitals near where I live, and in the coffee shop, the doctors come in all the time. And they have to get their, if they, if you just get straight coffee, you have to go make your own. Yeah. They're totally fucking confused <laughs> they're because they've only had people make coffee for them. Yeah. Right. So they're, they're over and they're like, what do I do? Just tip this. And I'm like, yeah, what? dude, just fucking tip it. And the coffee will come out that part. What about a lid situation? <laughs> what do I do about that? They're, it takes them 15 minutes <laughs> to get sugar and cream. And a coffee because they've never done any real life stuff. Sorry, are there any nurses here to help out right. with this? <laughs> now they could, you know, take your heart out and put a baboon heart out. I'm not, I'm not saying that they couldn't do that. They're really good at what they do, but because they're so specialized, they've never interacted with. Well, the whole thing is they talk about bedside manner because they're like, Autistic fucking morons. Oh, yeah. It's crazy when you talk to a doctor who has no idea how to communicate yeah. bad news, good news, or just like clearly explain anything 
like do what I do. I said, let me hold your wallet and I'll be right back with it. And I <laughs> okay. go, there'll be, there'll be twice as much money in it when I come back. <laughs> oh, good deal. <laughs> All right, let me just ask you, Joe, because you're from Minnesota, and I consider your manners to be the best here. Thank you. What Chris Stanley did of turning on his team during the big loss. Yeah. Out of line or understandable? Completely out of line. Never get mad at your team. Never get mad at your team. If you're a lifelong Mets fan, why are you turning on them after 32 days, Chris? (laughs) Years. 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 32 years. Born and bred. Fucked up years. Born and bred in these story Long Island cities. <laughs> Born and braised. You just burned like a $40 hat. But here's the thing where people talk about a team will break your heart. But then it's over and you move on back to reality. Because yeah. this is done now. Your I life is back to where it was before. And sure. everyone seems to forget that in the next season anyway. Oh, Everyone's yeah. Everybody like, will be there the next year. Yeah. But also look at the Royals. They were 90 feet away last year from winning this fucking series. It lost. It was devastating because everyone's like, the Giants again? Who cares? Yeah. Now, they built upon that. They went back-to-back pennants, and they never, as as Journey said, they didn't stop believing. No. Yeah. Okay? Any belief in my dream of a Mets win is dead. It's in that goddamn dustpan. <laughs> it's very clean dustpan. That did dust you leave pan. the dustpan? Yes, I did. It was so clean, you could have just called it a pan. <laughs> Dustless pad. So it was a nice day, <laughs> yeah. name for it. It was the vessel for my sacrifice to the baseball gods. <laughs> uh. I actually have a feeling that you should never even get past your childhood teams. That it's like your uh, your birth sign. You yeah. know, mm. that's just what you are. I agree with that, and I also think you kind of have to support the teams that, like. Your dad supported before you. Oh, you know? I, I, I don't. I, I kind of disagree. I think that you can become a Mets fan if your dad is a Yankees fan. But once you make right. that pick, that's it. You know. I'm done with my. I'm done with my Mets. They can go to hell. I don't care what they do anymore. Hope that hope City Field collapses. Ouch. <laughs> all you care. Losers. All you care about is people sharing the birdcast. Uh, Louis J. Gomez coming in today, who has become our best skanks friend, I believe. Oh, yeah, very much so. Yeah, uh, for me. Well, Big J is too busy these days. He's running around. He's bigger than life. He's got 18 different jobs. Um, I never see him. I feel like we should be bumping into him all the time. It doesn't happen that way. Well, he doesn't share the studio anymore. Um, Soder, same thing. Dave Smith. Let's face it, zero ambition. None. You know, None. I don't know what Dave Smith is up to. He's drinking somewhere right now. But Luis J. Gomez, the Puerto Rican Jenny Hutt, he <laughs> is out there trying to make things happen all the time. He's a real ass dude. Yeah. He's a mover and a shaker, isn't he? Like, I feel like I always see him. He's bopping around. Yeah. He's on Periscope. He's Even today, place. remember when he said this to you? Please, after you. Yes. I was uh, I was in shock when uh, Luis J. Gomez did that. Who was that really? It was Antonio Banderas. Ooh. Antonio Banderas, like a gentleman, let me walk before him. Like and a Spanish ne- gentleman. Yeah, and we nearly bumped into each other. And I was quite taken with him. Well, there, uh, has he ever been sexiest man alive? If not, you know. There was a time where I remember he was thought of that way. Definitely. I, I He must have been at least on one of those, like, uh, who does that? Like GQ or something like that? Yeah, GQ. Sexiest gentleman. People. 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 People does it. GQ is best dress. <laughs> okay. Not. He's a pretty good dresser, too. Well, no one said he wasn't. <laughs> that's for sure. Just put sexiest man alive and see if he's ever made it. Antonio Banderas, sexiest man alive. He has to me. I can't have Chris type because of his arm. He there cannot, right there's a picture you just went by. He has been sexiest man alive. Two years in a row now, it said. Not <laughs> now. <laughs> well, years ago. At that time. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Not everybody can see it Sex, at home. Sexiest gentleman alive. Did you feel like you felt sparks between us when we passed each other? I did. A little. I felt like there was sparks. And something happened. Well, right? he was. He's no longer with um, Melanie Griffith. Melanie Griffith, who, yeah. by the way, her two men back to back: Don Johnson, probably a sexist man alive, and Tony Banderas. There's something about her. Yeah. Now their their daughter, 
uh, is a million uh, shades of gray. She's a uh, million shades oh, yeah, of gray. Dakota. <laughs> yeah, she's name. North Dakota. North Dakota. So, State of North Dakota. Oh, that just reminds me, Fargo's on tonight. Well, I'm really concerned about everything. I'm it's so excited. I'm really loving this show. Isn't oh, it great that, when you get a show best. and then you're like, this is my show. Yeah. I'm going to be watching I'm like this that show. with every show, though. Every show. <laughs> doesn't matter what I'm watching. <laughs> I'm excited. Doesn't matter what I got on. Even while it's still on, I you're go, just like. Shh, the grinder's on. <laughs> Can't wait for the next scene because this one's so good now. The next one's gonna be great. Rob Lowe, you hilarious son of a bitch! You won't <laughs> stop, will you? And then sometimes I'll just uh, when when I'm finally drifted off to sleep, I'll just look at my TV and say, "Good night, friend." <laughs> I have Sweet. news for you, though, and I'm gonna put this out here. I don't want everybody to understand it. I don't consider Netflix TV. No, I consider Netflix the same way I consider Periscope. Just something that you do. I feel like you're at least on the same level. If you're a Periscope star, you might as well be a Netflix star. I feel like and when I see Netflix, I feel the same way as I see someone riding a bicycle on the highway. <laughs> like you are acting like you belong here, but you don't. You're going to get <laughs> run over. <laughs> Oh, look, none of his Mets gear is on. Vito just walked by, and he was just wearing a knit cap. He didn't stop to wave to us. Maybe he burned his shit, too. Did you talk to him today? No, I haven't talked to him. I'm done with him. I'm done with all Mets fans. (laughs) (laughs) What? What? Franchise. I walked by. He was in one of the studios here, and I walked by him, and he didn't even wave at me either. He just didn't. He just did that with me. He just just gave a look, and then he looked down. And he wanted me to run after him, like, oh, no, Fido. No. Come back, Fido. Don't, don't Your do that. Your team just lost a lot, so what? <laughs> Pathetically. Now, see, why does it feel worse to have your team come close than it does, like in my case, my team had no shot by May. No shot at all. It was done. Yeah. And I didn't feel bad. I was just like, whatever. Because it's just, they get to the Cubs. They got to the Dodgers. Don't now, don't you wish they would have let the Cubs have a shot at this? God, yes. I, defi- I, I'm so pissed. I was so happy when they fucking swept the Cubs. The That's Cubs the should have swept them. It's this, but then they get to the series and there's all this hope and all this happiness and all this, this fucking. Can I tell you something, dude? And this is my motto. Yeah. Don't take the world serious. That's my thing. And I said, <laughs> I fucked up. I should have heard that a week ago. I think you did. I think you couldn't hear through your perk ears. So perky. No. Yeah. Well, this is like a good perk. Is he uh, still uh, prescribing the perks for you? No, he said I should not be taking them during the day anymore. Just you, at night. Do you even watch the Netflix? Um, yeah, I watch. I watch some Netflix. Like I'll, I'll watch. original programming. I do. Yeah, I oh. watched um, Orange Is the New Black. I watched the first couple episodes that they sent me, and then I forgot. Yeah, I forget that Netflix has original programming. I'll, I'll 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 watch movies on there. Yeah, is House of Cards original programming yep. on Netflix? Yeah, but it's a remake of the British version. Right. Yeah. Well, first of all, stop being nerdy and caring. <laughs> oh, uh, I have a fun fact. I'm Joe. Uh, I would just I like to like remind that. you guys, it's actually originally a British <laughs> film. No one gives a fuck, Joe. <laughs> Ron, you know, actually, it was a short form like series that. on the BBC. It's a reimagining <laughs> of. Wait, Chris, what's your nerd voice? <laughs> I'm Joe, and I'm a nerd, and I know things about people don't care about. So you know that being a nerd isn't an accent, right? <laughs> You're like, hey, Shane, I'm a nerd here. Shane. I'm from the 1930s, and this is a Tommy gun instead of a machine gun. I'm going to ride on the car on the board, see? <laughs> Hope no one beats me up, because I'm a nerd. I just had sex with a paper boy. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds pretty nerdy. <laughs> So here's what I'm trying to say to you. This whole thing of, oh, we're l- releasing fucking 12 episodes of Kimmy Schmidt. Yeah. Uh, that's not that's not being on television. It's a different thing. You're it's right. It's a different fucking thing. And I feel like you consume it differently that it way. It doesn't mean that it's a terrible thing. I'm not saying, oh, Netflix blows. I'm saying stop calling it TV because it's not. Come up with a new name. The last thing I watched on Netflix was the Wet Hot American Summer. I haven't watched it. I feel like I haven't watched anything on there since then. I watched that too, and I enjoyed it. 
Yeah. But I did not think to myself, I'm watching a TV show. And you know what really annoys me? When Netflix says this is a Netflix original. Because What Hot American Summer technically isn't a okay. Netflix original. Again, now who's the nerd? <laughs> I don't give a fuck about that. I am that. Chris. I don't have an arm. <laughs> well, <laughs> okay, well, that's You have the perfect nerd voice, dude. <laughs> Thanks. I'm Joe, and I like the Vikings. <laughs> <laughs> Why did that nerd just barf? I don't know. Because <laughs> they're a Vikings fan. Um, Talk about false hope. Hey, Bob, what's up, buddy? Hey, how you doing? Yeah. First off, you guys will always be royals in my book. Yo, Bobo was a huge Mets fan, too. Maybe Chris and we can get together and go have a few drinks and slam the Mets together. I I'm saw sure Bobo. Uh, Bobo was at Anthony's karaoke party the other night, and right away he was fucking screaming at the hero. He's the goat. He's the goat. He literally was calling someone a goat. Like this was 1948. Yeah, old um, And then uh, Aunt and Don just had an uncomfortable, sexy singing session. Together. I saw that. Yeah. Yeah. They were. Uh, they had quite a duet together. They're lovely, um, and they do not let. The bloodline stop the attraction <laughs> so, between them. That's how it is in their family. They they have more sexual chemistry together <laughs> than most married couples. <laughs> that's close. But Italians are comfortable with that. Yes. Italians are very comfortable with that. They're loving people. Well, I remember one. Although uh, Joe has no sexuality. Mm -mm. But go ahead. I remember when Anthony was an, an intern here, he would talk about his mom like it was his girlfriend of 10 years every day. <laughs> I can't be late for her. I can't even hear that story. <laughs> yeah. <That's a> <laughs> it made me thing. very uncomfortable. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the fuck, bro? <laughs> <laughs> but uh, Aunt and Dawn are putting out an album called That's How It Is in Their Family. <laughs> uh, oh, speaking of that fucking line, this is what an asshole Chris Stanley is. So. Uh, we all have to get together because we did our G GPS show last night. Mm -hmm. New York City. Chris, how did it come out? Fantastic. Because I noticed that you didn't give me a copy to listen to. So, um, but it's due today, right? It's running this Saturday? It's running this Saturday, November 7th on Deep Tracks Channel 27. Did we mm -hmm. do a promo for it yet? We're going to have a promo soon. And the, the, those liners you cut last week also, that's, so that's right. into a promo. Yeah. Well, we got to remember to plug it every day. This is actually, this one has Gail's heart. This is her I'm very favorite era. I'm very excited about this one. I pushed a couple bands in, but you did, yeah. More, most of those were yours. Yes. Most of the choices are yours. I'm very excited. I feel like it's a very well curated I, playlist. Because uh, a lot of it is New York City, uh, 70s, a lot of CBGBs, Mud Club stuff. But I put in what I consider a couple... Oh, this will surprise you as well. Yes. Now, I admit, I did not get the Billy Joel that I was <laughs> <laughs> attempting to push in there, nor the Marvin Hamlish, which I don't know how we could do something without. <laughs> <laughs> well, it would have been a crowd pleaser. It would have been with with my gang, the Broadway gang, you know? Yeah, that's your crew. That's who you run with. Well, we don't run, but we shuffle along to it. <laughs> um, Are they all holding hands? Yeah, I'm just watching people burning their Mets hats at all these different sites on what? TV. Yeah. Unbelievable. It's Lenny Dykstra just burnt one. <laughs> Rip me off, Dykstra. <laughs> so you never want to start something? You just want it to end with you. Oh, so we're all sitting there and we were having a little, what we like to call, Smoke time. Yeah. So then we're walking over to our building. Gail gives me the tap like this, which means one thing. Huge celebrity on the street. You know how you don't try to overreact? Yep. But you want your friend to clock yes. him mm -hmm. without you pointing or whatever. So we look up and we see the major. I'm just going to give it out and, and not fuck around with it. Ferris Bueller is walking towards us. Yes. Now, Chris Stanley... <laughs> Brushes against Ferris Bueller, basically <laughs> oh, no. 
fucking belly to belly and face yes. to face and does it once <laughs> fucking r- recognize. And it's not like he has his head <laughs> down or anything. Like he Matthew Broderick's like looking up, he's like walking around, he's got his it would be so apparent. And there's no one else on the street. It's not like a busy street right, where Sunday, you're, maybe you would yeah, be focusing. Sunday night in the city. And I'm not kidding. They touch shoulders as they pass, they pass so closely to and each other. And this fucking knucklehead doesn't even notice. And by the way, what, why he's the world's worst producer. So, <laughs> but why was Matthew Broderick walking around like he just got here off a fucking potato truck? He looked so confused and lost. Yeah. He looked really lost. I almost heard him going like this. Why, look, it's 30 Rock in Radio City. (laughs) (laughs) There's the Fox building. (laughs) Nobody who's lived in the city this long looks that confused in Midtown. Like, you always know where you are in Midtown. Yeah. It's bizarre. (laughs) Like, you can see, like, different markers just from where you're standing right now. Just seconds before, a girl comes up and she's, like, Swedish or something. And she's like, excuse me, how do you, um, where is top? Of the Rock Rockefeller Center, and I'm like, you see this building standing over top of our heads. You're <laughs> here. <laughs> You've made it. <laughs> Can you uh, also tell me where your shoes are <laughs> and your pants and belt? Because <laughs> you're that fucking close. <laughs> it's literally the biggest building that is next. And to then us I right go now. to her. Look, in this country, honey, we always give somebody a twenty twin twam for a little help like that. <laughs> a little twenty twam twam. Uh, something for the help, lady. <laughs> Something for the help. It's something for the effort. That the effort. There you go. Perky. Perky perks. Is that what made you not see him? The perks. I was perking up. I, I don't even. I don't even remember seeing a person there. I got. I, that was just <laughs> fucking like there was no one there. I well, don't, here's the thing: because you brought up the perks, I'm gonna bring this up. Yeah. Friday, your your periscope was my favorite of all time. Yeah. But since then, you've been all anger. And that's downs, and people don't even realize how their mood changes, and they get angrier and angrier on this drug until you have to point it out to them or show them their scope back. <laughs> but your personality is changing to a darker. You think? I thought I was pretty happy at the Skrillex show. I thought I was, you know, just having a good time. You did not belong at that show. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. I mean, that's perfect. You shouldn't have been having a good time. That's a place that you sh- should have probably been annoyed. <laughs> And then the darkness of last night, the heel turn. That was ridiculous. Although the night before, I did like when you were running for your Uber car, fast as you could. <laughs> I, was, I was trying to talk up the scope bros for the, after the Mets loss. Uh, Mark, North Carolina. Hey, guys. I love the show. You right. were talking about how doctors don't have common sense. And one time I was visiting my brother-in-law, who's a rich doctor, and somebody left the dome light on in their car in his garage. So I said, no problem, we'll just jump off your car. He says, I'll look around for some jumper cables. He found them, and I said, you know, let's go. What are you doing? He says, I want to read the instructions first. I said, I don't need to read the instructions to jump off a car, dude. (laughs) He has never jumped off a car. Now, I'm not, by the way, I'm not saying that they don't have common sense. I said they don't have street sense because they've looked at one thing. Yes. Now, if if you're going to fucking vote right now for this guy, do you want to hear he doesn't know what, how to fucking jump a car? <laughs> no. And, no exactly. right, Mark, you're my favorite thing on the Cleveland show. I just think that you're fabulous <laughs> on there. <laughs> See ya. Love the show. Bye. All right. Thanks, buddy. He's good. He's good. Those doctors are like a master of one. Now, if you spend all those years, too, uh, trying to, by the way, Mark Rubio surging. I don't want to see a Mark Rubio now after a summer of fucking Trump. That'll be the most boring thing ever. Please, God, no. You know I, who wants him there, right? Who? Gloria Stefan and her fucking husband. They'll be able to play these gigs all the time. <laughs> J-Lo, everybody. You know what I mean? Sure. It's like all the Jay-Z gang is out, and it's going to be the Stefan posse. Louis J. Gomez will probably be showing up doing oh, stuff. that I'd like. Pitbull. Yeah, no Rubio. A thirsty son of a bitch. Oh, uh, look, tell him they come in. Oh. Tell that poor fuck to come in. Poor dear. He's downright mopey the way he's it, moving through the hall. It's like when a girl breaks up with you, you know? Oh. 
He looks. Let's all just be nice to him. Okay. Okay. Why? Hey, buddy. How you doing? Hey, Vito. Hey, pal. How you doing? How's everything? You okay? You look good, man. Yeah. Like shit. What are you having? Some sweats for yourself? Ginger ale. All right, nice. Yeah, you need that. My tummy doesn't feel good. No, Mm -hmm. your tummy's bad. How's things, okay? Feeling great? Not very good. Yeah. It's been a rough day. Well, you got still a lot of great things in your life, right? No. You got a nice family. You got a nice mom. Yeah. You got a great girlfriend. Doesn't matter. Good job. You got your own cellular smartphone (laughs) that you do stuff on. I would give it all up. I know, buddy. But you know what? You had a nice time, and you really had some fun. You made new friends this year, too. You you know? I hate every Mets fan in the world. They're awful. I went to City Field on Saturday and Friday. I'm in, I'm in debt for all these tickets I bought. Sure, sure. But I'm excited for next year. There you go. Mm-hmm. You got that. Why? Hey, I, pitchers and catchers in another four months. I can't wait. I'm going to be counting down the days, you know what, and where we, we made it all the way to the World Series, so that's one month less of off time. Yeah, yeah. that's right. Now we get to go watch the fucking Jets, and they're doing great, too. They're doing fantastic. Yeah. You got the Jets. So much. And yeah. you, you know what you have? You have memories. You have so many memories. I, did, I, went, to, I went to 20 games this year. And you then, went to 20 games. And 20 and you had, uh, 25 Hot dogs and the post. snacks, and you had soda oh, pop. peppers. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All for right. Budweiser's. Right. And didn't you say you jerked off in one of the bathroom stalls? Didn't you? The family bathrooms, yeah. Okay, so. you can spread out in there. Yeah. So it was a great year, and you're and you're young, you know. Should have no regrets about did, it. Like, how did you feel when the Eagles lost? Oh, I just feel the same way always. Like you feel now is what I consider life. Okay, <laughs> you know what I mean. Like I feel they live that, in that. Yeah, I. So no one notices with me, you know. But I just, I mean, fifty years they've had a Super Bowl. My team's been to two, lost two. Yeah. So, you know what? I'm being a little bitch, I guess. No, 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 no. This is your time. It's like I would say, this, like when a girlfriend dies, you know, <laughs> you have to remember like, okay, now my girlfriend's dead. But you got to remember the good times, like meeting her or taking her out to a wooded area, digging the grave, you know, hearing her, please, yeah, happy, please don't kill stuff. me. Yeah. The happy stuff, mm-hmm. you know, knowing that I got away with it, you know, Feeling like a master criminal, feeling like a god Hmm. among men, you know, leaving like little clues for the police department, taunting them. Specific. Yeah. Those are memories. Yeah. There's some good memories this year. Sure. It was a good year. Nobody expected this, but it's going to be a rough. But you never believed that they could lose right up. Now, ninth inning, would you have left Harvey in? You blaming it's, everybody? No, you know what sucks? Like, looking back, you're like, why did we leave him in? But, like, so in the eighth inning, I texted my friend, and I was like, I think they should let Familia come in to get his confidence back. But then when I saw the dugout, and I saw, like, Matt Harvey, like, running up to Terry Collins and being like, you better not take this ball away from me, I was like, oh, yeah, let him do it. Like, he's ready. Mm-hmm. But, I mean, you're a major league manager. you got to make the tough decisions. Every fucking person in that place. Wanted to see Harvey. Yeah, there was. There was. I mean, was, let's remember this is also entertainment, and the excitement factor that this guy was going to pitch nine fucking smoked out fucking innings in the World Series was exciting. Yeah. I mean, he you was, weren't going to win the World Series anyway. You had to win three in a row. Well, I think I think we could have, dude. That no. team out hits you. They out they were, hustle you. They were crazy. They fucking. They're baseball smart. You're baseball stupid. They couldn't. They just never gave up. And it just hurts. Well, so they much. also didn't make fucking error after error. You can't make those kind of errors and then go, what happened to us? Well, you fucking sh- shit the bed, boys. And when they did make errors, it was like they gave up one run. Yeah. And we gave up errors and we gave up five runs. And Yeah, so you didn't deserve to win. No, you know what? They Losers. played like shit. They don't deserve to win. And yeah. guess what they get to do on opening day next year? What? They open up in Kansas City. So they open up. The first day of the year, they get to watch Kansas City get their rings right in front of them. It doesn't front mean row anything seats. next year. They're cucked out. No one cares next year. It's like people in New Orleans aren't sitting around 
thinking about their ring from fucking years ago with the Saints. But watching like, them get blow. the ring you lost, that's got to suck. Well, half the guys will be gone. Doesn't matter. Three of Murphy's them. gone. And they would have been different rings anyway, the sizing. Oh, mm-hmm. the sizing's different. They wouldn't they would have had you would have had Mets written on it. Yeah. Does yeah. anybody wear those N L or AL pennant rings people get? I, I feel like that's like no. a slap in the face. I wouldn't wear that. That's like fucking walking around with your silver medal. Throw it in the fucking river. <laughs> um Captain Houston. Captain Dave. Hey Houston. guys, uh, good day, gentlemen and lady. Hey Kathy. Uh, a few, few quick things. Uh, Stanley, you suck. Really sorry, Vito, and super excited for uh, GPS. Uh, I just wanted to brag if you guys saw that awesome non-Netflix uh, Periscope show with Dan, uh, the man Berlman, macking on that girl. I did. I watched it, and as the numbers shot from <laughs> incredible numbers all the way down like like it was the 1929 stock market. Yeah. I finally tapped out. Um, I did see some pretty good impressions of comedians who've done our show, though. That was exciting. That was a great premise. Well, it was a great Mike Racine. Yeah. Now, the fact is, even people don't know Mike Racine outside of that room, but the guy did a good Mike Racine. (laughs) (laughs) So you were making out with a girl on Periscope? Dan? Yeah, yeah. After a, after the show, there was a girl who was cute, who oh, I ordinarily would have talked to, but this was Periscope, so uh, we just kissed. Mm. How deep of a kiss? It was passionate. Show now, on Chris. You just met her, or you knew her? Ju- just just met her there. She was just at the show and really liked it. And then someone commented, oh, I bet that was Perlman's first kiss. So I was like, oh, yeah? Second kiss. And then we kissed again. Wow. I think she's the one. Love it for a scope. So you're doing Periscope porn, basically. I mean, Softcore. It, it was very soft. You were a good host that night, though. You were explaining things to people. Thank you. The audience had no interest in it, but no. your presentation was fine. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, Joe's presentation was ridiculous. Yeah, it was bad. Just a guy walking around a bad party <laughs> yeah, with sure. a fan on. <laughs> you know, yeah. it's Halloween night. I feel like a lot of people had their own plans. Maybe it was a light yeah. Periscope night in it, general. Yeah. <laughs> it was I was a, a window fan for Halloween. Yes, we know. It stunk. It's <laughs> great. <laughs> uh but you know, uh, tons of people jumped in with Dan Perlman and after watching the show for a while, off they went. See, Anthony did a thing where he would only he would do it, break out, yeah. come back you know, 20 minutes later with one single performance. Yes. Come back out again. That seems like a smarter idea. Because then people want to initially click. Maybe they can't stick around forever. Well, they certainly can't make it into the MC crowd work banter. <laughs> um, tonight's a travel night, and then we're in Kansas City tomorrow. No. We are done and staying in our hotel rooms. Mm-hmm. And uh, how much in debt are you? How big? How far in debt? What did you pay for those tickets? I am nine hundred dollars in debt. Oh, luckily you make a lot of money. Oh yeah. Now, w- did you put it on your credit card? <laughs> no. Uh, friends were like, "Do you want to go to the game?" And I was like, "I can't afford it." They were like, "Don't worry, I'll pay for it. You pay me back." Um, but. One of them is a bookie. So there's a Vega on it. Okay. okay. And, uh. Why don't you just offer to go out thumb breaking for him? Could I, you do that? I tried that. He was like, you can't do that. Today's, today's bookie world. He was like, you, uh, you, if somebody doesn't want to pay, you just got to take the loss because if you try to assault them, they'll sue you. So. Today you just gotta let. If, then I'm gonna fucking get <laughs> yeah. fucking bookings going. He was like, today you just if one guy doesn't do it for me, you you tell him you can't run a you can't run bets with you anymore, and then you tell all the other bookies in your network, and then. So let me get this guy's number. I love the fucking fuck you. Yeah, I want to put fuck ten G's down on the game tonight. Yeah. <laughs> I'm feeling good about the Panthers. No, you know what? Change a hundred G's. <laughs> really? Yeah. That seems suspicious, but. I'm good for it. Don't worry. What's the most you let me bet? <laughs> That's I make how much. Crazy bets in that 
Yeah. I'll give me the over and the under. Fuck. And also, I said it. I'm going to put down 10 grand. It's going to rain frogs. <laughs> okay. <laughs> all found money for me. <laughs> the worst is having to pay this money after the loss. Like handing. Yeah. Makes it harder. Yeah. But it was a fun Halloween. Oh, yeah. It's good. It's good. It's a good attitude. Yeah, it is a good attitude until you remember what happened at the end. It feels bad. That pathetic <laughs> yeah. loss. Uh, is this your Kyle Jenner video that you put in? Uh, that, I cannot that wasn't mine. take your. That was... Oh yeah. Um, why don't we break here, Chris? We'll be back. Uh, Luis J. Gomez coming up. And Vito, you really do look good, buddy. It's going to be a good year for you. All right. Are you going to get that nine hundred? Uh, I'm just going to have to not go out for the next month. Mm. You're a normal $90 a night. Every time that you go out, you do that 10 times, and then you'll have it. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not going out for a few months. What do you What do you normally spend on a night out? Um, I usually go to bars where I know people, so I don't really spend a lot. Mm-hmm. So, just tipping, like, then? Yeah, just tipping and, you know, drunken food at the end. <laughs> no. Yep. Which, Cheap uh, food, though, right? What's drunken food for you? Okay, okay, well, the, the word, I think... So, the first playoff loss that I went to this season was the NLDS against the Dodgers, Mm -hmm. and I was drunk and I was sad, and that day I went to McDonald's, and like I had their Steakhouse Supreme Burger, and it was just a fucking McDonald's burger. That sounds fantastic. That actually does sound pretty good. So, my drunk food goes pizza, you know, McDonald's, just whatever's open. Ralph actually said this, and I do need to throw it to break, but he says, cheer up, Vito. It could be worse. You could be Chris Stanley. That makes me feel I'm I'm in a better place now. I yeah. that. I'm already sad because it's a year away from Halloween and I don't know. I know. Do. This is the saddest day of the year. Yeah. All saints, then all souls, right. but then what? <laughs> I saw some girl crying on the way home from a Van Halen concert because she says it's gonna be a whole year before we see him again. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Yeah. And who knows the woman I'll be then? <laughs> right. And I go, Well, you don't know. They could be on T V or something. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> they never seem to put them on SNL, but if they do, you'll get to see them then. Right back, Bennington. Yeah, yeah. It's the Bennington Show. On what science now believes to be a Monday. That's so. In November. My religion tells me otherwise. Oh, yeah. I know how the old the world is. Six months old. <laughs> That's in the Bible. Um, do you believe in anything out of the Bible? Uh, I believe, I feel only in that there are lessons in the Bible that are, that are probably worse. About heaven? The heaven lessons? (laughs) No, like, uh, you know, being good to one another. You can extract certain ideas that are reoccurring in other religions as well. Golden rule, really. Yeah, golden rule. But there's something that I believe and I hold wholeheartedly, and that it was an Adam and Eve and not an Adam and Steve. Well, that's definite, because it never <laughs> said anything about Steve. Just two dudes <laughs> hanging out in the Garden of Eden. And one of them bit the apple. Yeah. And Steve. I did. Uh, yeah, Steve did. Uh, <laughs> Steve, the fucking asshole that he was. <laughs> oh, sure. And even, uh, you know, Eve didn't bite the apple. She just talked Adam into it. Oh, she never bit it. Yeah. She said, you should bite this apple. Yeah, and the apple was her vagina. No one ever thinks of that. I know. But that was her... Uh, well, the apple, it, it comes, if you think of it this way, as an apple mound. You know what I mean? Sure. And he went down, enjoyed the juices, sweet nectar, then got caught by God. Yes, and the but snake wanted the, the apple. The snake wanted the apple. Snake representing, of course... The penile implant. <laughs> yes, with the dirty dick, if you will. Dirty dick. Now, all the animals, the talking animals, that was just hallucinogens. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. Because you could trip balls in pre-heaven. Yeah. Because it wasn't heaven. You weren't there with angels. Yeah. You were there with animals that talked. That's so weird. You're weird, dude. I would have been freaked out. If I was Adam or Steve, I would have been 
losing it. <laughs> you'd like, have been Steve. Been By the way, you'd have been Steve. Yeah, <laughs> you're a definite fucking bottom. If you know what I mean, bro. That I'd be like, yo, bro. That that sheep's talking to us. He's talking, telling the stuff. Like I'd be like, what what's going on? Well, but here? you didn't know any people anyway. I see Chris as a power bottom. <laughs> you know what? Well, I, yeah. I know. Um, I see him as a passive bottom, <laughs> but that's me. Just laying there taking it. Enjoying it, but not really knowing how to push back. The thing is, he started as a bottom. Now he's here. (laughs) 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 Started at a bottom, not a whole damn hair. Now, here's the thing about Adam and or Eve. Who taught them to talk? Weird, right? Yeah. I guess God was a good teacher. (laughs) But they, they don't say it. I mean, you would think at some point they would say, Oh, and on the second day, he taught Adam and Eve how to talk. And were they ever babies, or were they just full-grown adults? No, they were never babies. One of them was a baby rib that was taken from Adam. Mm, See, God delicious. can't make anything himself without taking it from something else. So he always needs like a rib right. or a toe or a nostril, and then he builds on from there. <laughs> right. In, in Adam's case, a baby back rib. Yeah. Now, the thing is... I kept looking through to see if there was, like, one part of Adam and Eve where Eve had the snake in her mouth. Or at least was rubbing it against her face and talking dirty. But I couldn't find it. Weird. (laughs) Yeah. That is weird. (laughs) I mean, you think think she wanted to get get sexy, right? (laughs) See, they didn't know for sex. Uh, They didn't know until they were cast out. Um. That they were naked. Yes. So the second they were cast out, they realized, and Eve, this is in the Bible, she yells, my pussy. Yeah. And she puts her hands over her cunny area. <laughs> and another she, one, like, she had this uh, over her tits, then this yeah. one down over her pussy. And then she tried to put her ass up against a tree. <laughs> and she felt shame. She felt shame because of her nude genitals. You only you don't feel j- shame when you put cloth over your genitals. <laughs> then I'm very comfortable. <laughs> yes, <laughs> I don't have to worry I'll go to about a movie. what people think of my genitals. Yeah, I'll go to a movie then. <laughs> I'll go off to a movie knowing that my genitals are covered. There's no reason to feel shame. <laughs> and then oddly, I don't feel shame when I'm in the men's room oh, with, no. with my dick out. Um, so because good. that's a place for it. I unclothe. The beast, as I said. <laughs> Every time you pee? Yes. Allow me to unclothe the beast. Again, Bennington, please. <laughs> Same shit. This is the designated dick area. It's funny. Every so, yeah, time. Yeah. And you don't feel shame in a shower if you're with people of the same gender. Right. Yeah. Or someone that you love and trust. And has seen you unclothed before. You don't care if in the shower unless there is um, towel whipping. And then. Then you feel shame. Then Be back like, to shame. Why aren't I standing up to them? Why don't I just want to stand up to these guys? <laughs> I actually never really felt comfortable in the locker room. It was always like a weird thing. Is that right? Yeah. I mean, I didn't like hide. Mm-hmm. Like, though, that's a very specific girl who should be like, I'll actually just go change in a stall. But. I was aware it was a strange thing. Like, I wouldn't be around my girlfriends, like girls I was close to. Yeah. But then, like, a bunch of other bitches just running around, you're like... I don't know. I don't think I don't think boys worry about that. Like you said, there's always a couple that do. But once you know this is the shot, you just go for it. You yeah. Know? You're done, you get very comfortable But it's with also it. the age. I think that I could, you know, lock a room right now. If I had to change in front of a bunch of women, I don't think I would feel anything. But yeah. like when you're like Seventh newly, grade. yeah, you're newly, you're brand new boobs. You're just like, this is horrible. <laughs> this sucks. You know what that, why you feel that way is from the original sin. Yes. You know, before that, they would go in, like Adam and Eve would go in the locker rooms. <laughs> Tits out, nuts out, nobody would feel anything. Oh, no. Yeah. It wasn't until they were cast east of Eden that they were like, my balls are out. This is fucking, <laughs> what if I run into somebody I know? I do something about nuts this. are out. <laughs> <laughs> Adam actually said, am I fucking dreaming? And they said for the first three days after we start out, he just had a teacup that he put, kept his nuts in. And they're like, I know know that they're covered right now. And that's great. 
but it still looks ridiculous. Yeah, this is worse than just having the nuts out. <laughs> and we need that cup for later. <laughs> we don't have a lot of cups here. We're, you know, we're, this is our first place together. <laughs> so I guess that's the designated nut cup now. Yeah. I'm not going to be using that for anything else. I don't know whether it, has, it said nut cut <laughs> on the side, but it should have. By the way, this is why I think we'd make great pastors. We, we make, make great, great pastors. pastors. Have you already cut that uh, parody song? We make great pastors. I'm writing, I wrote the lyrics this morning, and I'll have it uh, by tomorrow. Um. All right, good. I'm excited for it. Me too. But you know it's not pastors, right? That's just something we just right, do now. Right, right. <laughs> we'll do that too, though. Let's do that too. <laughs> just in case. <laughs> Chris, you look like you got a duck's ass haircut because your hair is so greasy. Yeah. It's just going back into it, Fonzie. Got no hat, got no shades. I feel naked out here. I feel like Adam and or Steve. <laughs> you won't let go of the Steve thing, will you? <laughs> then just Adam. Mm, yeah, I saw him in the it's hallway. So I don't know why Chris gave us that we had to pre-show him when he came in post. That's yeah, that's what and I was that would told. have been fine. I know. Although he only does one long rambling sentence the whole time you're in here, you can't interact with him. <laughs> but I'm sure he would story. like the Adam and Steve talk. Oh, he would love it. Adam and Steve probably would have opened up the first gay club in, and they would have called it What Eden. Wet Eden. That's cool. <laughs> and I guess if there was a, a gay thing like that, that probably would Adam and Eve, Adam and Steve. That would be like either eating ass or anal. Yeah, I would. I assume when you said it, I assumed it was eating ass. I thought anal. <laughs> I thought straight hard. You're anal. always thinking anal. I know old Chris Stanley, and he is old. He's always thinking about receiving anal. ATM also, it could be. You like to ask the mouth, because I even thought that that <laughs> has lost its glow on the internet. Like, you don't even hear that coming Oh, up. that was like a mid-2000s thing when people were just obsessed people were with obsessing. ATM. Yeah. Yeah. They loved it. It's passed, it's, it's passed by, but I, I'll still raise that flag for ATM. <laughs> <Huh>. <laughs> I'll, never for, I'll never forget. Uh, Jackie the Joke Man is at the Broadway Comedy uh, tonight. And the Jackie Martling show at Broadway Comedy at 8 o'clock. And guess who's headlining there tomorrow? We're going to play 20 questions. Is it a man? It is a man. Have they done the show before? Yes. Have they done the show in the last month? Probably. Of October. Is this person... Has, <laughs> has, yes, it is a human has person. This, Man, been headlining, been doing comedy for no. 15 years or more. Do they have a TV show? Not TV, no. Do they have a recent special? No. Do they have a podcast? I'm already annoyed with this. I'm just going to tell okay. you guys. <laughs> Gurian. Oh, Whoa! my God! Yeah. Jump around! Yeah. He said that. That is not at all what I thought you were going to say. Could I call you tomorrow and plug? And I just start laughing. I'm like, yeah. Please do. Um, I'm very excited for him. That's awesome. Joe List and Mike Vecchion are on the list. I wonder what that means. Broadway Comedy Club list, Joe List, Mike Vecchion. I didn't even think those guys would have ever played that thing. Maybe just on our list, Joe List style. I don't know how you headline a New York club either, do you? Let me ask uh, Dan. I'm sure he knows the Broadway club. Yeah, he knows. If I know Dan. Dan, if you're not macking the fucking chick right now, could you come over and answer a question? Quit Frenching. The Broadway Comedy Club, right? Yes. You know that place. Uh, one time we almost took an unmasked there, but the headliner said absolutely not. I won't say who it was, but we all know him. Uh... Do they have headliners? They have they have uh, ha they have really good comics in the city that will go and perform there. It's not one of the top clubs. That's not what I said. Do they have a headlining type club where there's an actual headliner? No. Okay. They have the last comic on rather than a headliner. Exactly. Okay. Showcase. Mm. Showcase, I call it. Now, why won't a lot of comics do that? Those clubs. 
the Broadway or showcase clubs? Broadway. Uh, it's uh, there are rumors that the owner is very difficult, and it's in Times Square, and it's kind of a, a dump of a club. Mm. Well, you're giving it a hell of a plug. <laughs> Martling there is there, and I know that he hands out five bucks to people who come up and tell jokes. I don't know how they do it. They charge <laughs> people to come in, and then they give you money back if you tell jokes. That's quite a deal. Yeah. I'd go for it. It's kind of a fun room when it's full. I guess any room is fun when it's full, but it's sort of set up like a big cafeteria, almost, the downstairs. Well, I like a big cafeteria. You know, you, you get your dessert and know that you have it. Sure. You can keep it there on your plate the whole time. And you're kind of a cafetorium person. I know that. I am because I love auditoriums. Yep. Yeah. But then there's not enough food in an auditorium, and I love a cafeteria, but where are you going to put a slideshow? And that's why I invented the cafetorium, the world's first Adam and Steve cafetorium. Um, just has homoerotic pictures up all over the place. Yeah. And tater tots. And tater tots. Oh, it's tot day? If I, um, if I, uh, would work a cafetorium. My opening joke would be to take some of the creamer there and yeah, doesn't this look like jizz? <laughs> and then my impression of multiple migs. <laughs> he said that he could smell my cunt. <laughs> and that's why I'm going to let you stay, Clarius, because you said the mic hunt. <laughs> look into yourself. What? Is this like what some Batman type stupid clue? <laughs> Why are you saying that? Because in real life, there's never clues. Like that. <laughs> I have one clue for you. Just tell me. What? <laughs> well, Gurian is uh, headlining there tomorrow night. Jackie Martling is headlining there tonight. Broadway comedy quickly becoming America's favorite fun spot. Sounds like hoot. I can't believe. I was not thinking that it was who was going to be headlining. What did you do on my phone? I did Straight? nothing. I did nothing. Yeah. Like, whenever since you took it out of there, it's not working. Yeah, let me, here, press this. Press everything at the same time. That usually works. Hey, are we all saying hoot now or just you, Gail? Or just me. I noticed you've been picking it up lately. Picking it up? I feel like I've always said hoot. Really? This is not turning on. Hold on, let me plug it in. You, you probably didn't plug it in before. I did. I saw it lit up green. Lighting up green is a good thing, then. Yes. yes. <laughs> green, Christ. green is good. Red bad. Greed is good. I did that in my film, Wall Street. Love that movie. Do you? Yeah, I do enjoy it. You like it? Oh, love it. Love Wall Street. Because a janitor could take over the world, according to Wall Street. <laughs> He's very clever, where he fucking had a uh, corporate espionage. Corporate espionage. Espionage. <laughs> now, what are you going to do with your time now that you're not rooting for the Mets? I'm trying. I'm, I'm trying to figure that out. I mean, there's nothing. There's a void now in my life. I have, I'm gonna have to fill it up somehow. Second job. I tried to avoid it. <laughs> um, is it working? Mm -mm. I don't know why. What happened to it? I don't know. It back over if you're just not going to do anything. I am trying. <laughs> yeah, sure you are. I really am. I'm pressing all the buttons. This thing is just dead as Dillinger. I don't know why. When I unplugged it, it was like seventy five percent charged, and the light was the screen was on. Then you banged it on the, on the no. Desk or I just handed it to you. Why'd you break the phone? I didn't. I don't want this rumor to start spreading around the office. Why'd you kill the puppies? What are you supposed to do when your phone just dies? I don't know. Why don't you let me charge it a little more? What well, good see. is charging if it doesn't even turn on? I don't know. We'll see. Someone said I need to do a hard re restart. That's what I'm doing. No. Is that when you press br both buttons at the same time? I don't know what that means. This that one and this like, one. Yeah, I know, but it sounds like something that someone who doesn't know how to fix a phone does. Isn't that how you do the, the hard buttons. restart? I think so. It happened to me see? once before. I did it. Hard restart was right. There you go. Hard restart is all it took. Don't ask me how I figured it out, but I did. Well, I kind of did it. We both did it. Mm -mm. We're both heroes. Just one of us. 
So anyway, GPS is on next Saturday or this coming Saturday. This coming Saturday. Deep Tracks, Channel 27, as we take a look at New York City. There are some rumors that the New York City one is even better than the Detroit one. I have heard these rumors. It's very close to my heart, this music, so I'm I'm very excited about it. All right, it. let's let the executive producer of the show come up with it. Which one do you think is the better episode? I think the New York City episode is the better episode of GPS. Wow. Which one surprised you more, though? Detroit. I, I knew less about the Detroit scene. That surprised me more, but I think this is the better episode. because. So the, let's get best to Detroit, then. <laughs> No, no. <laughs> this is a fucking rocking episode. Oh, it's the playlist so is ridiculous. It's crazy. If yeah, if somebody had handed me this playlist as a youngster and said, "Start here," this is all you need to know. So, so light good. a candle. Um, now we got to think about what city to do next. I know. Let's. Well, you know what? Let's go outside, out of the mouth of babes. Pick a city that you would like to know their musical heritage. Oh boy! Well, oh boy, he says. I've always he is young. been a fan of the Los Angeles scene, but I feel like there's a lot of deep cuts that I am unfamiliar with. See, here's the thing about Los Angeles: you really have to pick an era. Yeah. What are you most interested in? The Sunset Strip of the 1960s. Ooh. That's what we the, had to do with New York because you could do a couple oh, yeah. different eras. The Canyon scene of the 70s, the singer-songwriters, the fun. 80s, and their glam rock. And the 90s fucking gangster rap. <laughs> Any one of those could be done. Seriously. Yeah. He's laughing as if this is comedy. I would, I would be interested in like the early 70s Los Angeles scene. So you're thinking like the whole Joni Mitchell, Doors. Jackson Brown. The yeah. Doors is not no. early 70s. Late dude. 60s. But look, dude, you can't have both. You want to do you a pick. 60s, or you want to do the birds, the Doors, the Beach Boys, or do you want to move into the 70s? And do the Jackson Brown yeah. Eagles. Look, you're out. Nobody can even fucking no, think no. about you. I got it. No, you're done. Chris, what do you want to hear? What city, first of all? I like Seattle. I think Seattle could be fun. Let me take a guess what time period. <laughs> Grunge. Yes. Where comes Rooster. You don't feel like that's been done quite a bit? It's been it's been done, but we do we do it better. How? We're going to play the same bands. Yeah. And how, and will there be enough to uncover? Because it's been so. It's been covered. covered. Yeah. Well, then I like the Warren Zevon era of Los Angeles then. That straight up is what I want. No, the Warren Zevon, that singer songwriter thing with Warren Zevon, he might not even make because he wasn't in with the other group. Well, I guess he was in with Linda Ronstadt. Yeah. He wrote for her. But he was such a, he wasn't part of any scene. I'll just put it that way. He definitely like is his own dude. Yeah, he is. So he may or may not make that fucking scene. Because remember, we only got, you know, 12 bands. They, yeah. they give us an hour. We only got 12 bands, 12 bands. Am I the only one who's thinking Manchester or London? I was thinking London. I was thinking like London, like what, early 60s, early early to mid? You know, when I did Anthony's show, he goes, why? He goes, he hates that era. He says they all sound like they're singing the same song. You could say that a lot about a lot of yeah. genres and a lot of different things. I, you know, I said to him, it's a great fucking song, though. It's a really good song. <laughs> it's a really good song. It's like maybe the best song ever. <laughs> yeah. Might be my favorite song that those 12 bands did. But would you like that era or would you like the glam you know, yeah. David Bowie, fucking T Rex. There's so many good, like, England Roxy music. Roxy music. And then what about. And Sweet. No one ever fucking brings up Sweet. That was one crazy ass fucking band. And then what about the Manchester scene, too? Like, what would that be? Early. Early 80s? 80s? Yeah. Yeah. That, that could be. That could be fun as shit. 24 hours. I've 24 got hour it in my mind. Though. I definitely want to do Memphis. Yes. I like to do Muscle Shoals. Chicago, I wonder if they'd have a problem going as bluesy as I want to go, but... You'd have to go that, pretty bluesy. Oh, yeah. I would go bluesy and then throw in a stick song at the end. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Here's I'm one for the rest of you. sailing away. 
It would be just all these fucking crazy <laughs> men, fucking blues guys. <laughs> Set an open course <laughs> for the virgin sea. Why doesn't anyone realize that's Broadway? He said an open course <laughs> for the virgin sea? Whatever the fuck he did. I make up shit as I go along. Um, and now, you know, Cleveland could be an interesting pool there, too. Yeah. There's so many good Austin. ones. Austin. We could do Austin. Austin, like, what time? Yeah, it would be a tough one. Because really, you could jump back and forth between you this time and this music wouldn't sound that different. Yeah. Like, it stayed that same kind of outlaw country guy thing for like 40 years. Yeah. That would be a fun one. I feel like, I don't know. Also, one of my favorite cities to do this in is Boston. That'd be fucking great as shit. Boston rocks. Yeah. Except for the band Boston. Yeah. Not Boston. <laughs> band. That's the weird thing. <laughs> we would do Boston without doing Boston. Perfect. Same way when we do Chicago, we're not playing oh, Chicago. No way. <laughs> They're not in. <laughs> Travel exhausts me. Did I ever tell you, like, when you were a, a, a little girl? We were in, there was some <laughs> Chicago song on the radio. Let's, uh, and it was like, it was the Peter Cetera. But to say I'm sorry. Remember that one? Yeah, yeah, So you're like fucking, I guess you're all happy and you're singing along with this song. You're just a, literally a toddler. So I'm driving and I can't figure out where I'm going. So it was those things where for some reason you just turn the radio down and your fucking heart broke. <laughs> Because they turned down the fucking radio. My beloved Chicago. Yeah. You just acted like I threw them out on the street. <laughs> How could you? Yeah. I was and, enjoying this. And like, it wasn't obviously a, a fucking, you know, CD or anything. So I went, I go, oh, oh, I'm sorry. And the song's over and I'm like clicking around like, well, it's a hit. Maybe I can find it somewhere. <laughs> Little kids think everything fucking serious. I watched a baby just lose it on the train today because her mom wouldn't let her suck on the subway pole. You had to suck on it, honey. That's what I wanted you to Get some. To <laughs> suck on the pole. And she just started to do that thing where um, they just like thrash backwards. Like, then I'll make it impossible for you to hold me. No, they just arch their back. <laughs> <laughs> you know I wanted that pole. It tastes so medley good on my tongue. <laughs> Feels so good on the gums that are so sore. Where's Luis J. Gomez? He just signed in. We could uh, we could break. Why would we break? We need to catch up on breaks. Why do we got to catch up on breaks? Because I told us to break too late the first time. You put catch up on breaks? That's gross. Is it because you're afraid to do a live read in front of Luis J. Gomez? We also do have to do a live read as well, yeah. Yeah, but does it matter which is which? Does no. It- no, we could just we could, we could do a live read while, while Lewis well, is here. Well, let's just do the live read right now, and then we don't have to break. Okay. Uh, you need to know how to cook. Cooking at home means eating healthier and saving money instead of ordering expensive takeout. But where do you start? Blue Apron has you covered for less than $10 a meal. Blue Apron covers all the fresh ingredients you need to create home-cooked meals. Just follow the easy step-by-step instructions. Each meal can be prepared in 40 minutes or less. No overwhelming trips to the grocery store. No more sad takeout. No matter what your dietary preferences are, Blue Apron makes it a breeze to discover and prepare dishes like apple cider glazed chicken or butternut squash and kale calzones with arugula and apple salad right in your own kitchen. Cook with ingredients that you've never used before, like watermelon radishes, farro, and purple potatoes, perfectly proportioned so you're not wasting food, and recipes between 500 to 700 calories per portion, delicious and good for you. Right now, start, get your first two meals for free at Blue Apron. Just go over to blueapron.com slash raw dog. I am a person who does Blue Apron. Uh, Gail does Blue Apron. We've yes. been doing them. For years, before Blue Apron started running radio spots, 
Uh, what are you excited about this week, Gail? Uh, this week, I get my, my, uh, delivery on Thursday. Right. But coming up, I have not done the chicken wings yet. Have you done this one? The Korean chicken wings I am doing tonight for Monday Night Football. I'm perfect. Yeah. Maybe I will do it tonight as well. Yep, did, I, I've cooked them before. They're out of this world. Did you also do your vegetarian dish that you yes, got? Yes, I did. Your pear. Was, yeah, my pear. Th- fantastic. Well, you get the sourdough bread in a way that I can't get in the city. It's it's phenomenal. I'm really yeah. excited about uh, the wings. I might join you and maybe we'll do a little, uh, little cook-off. We should do a thing where we put pictures of our food up against each other and then see who wins. I love it. I You're know, on. But here's the thing. Get used to finishing second because <laughs> as far as Blue Apron goes, not only, and this is like I said before, they sent me my own Blue Apron to wear. I know. And I put it on and I feel pretty damn good about myself. All right. Join Gail and I and be part of this. Uh, you don't want you to live your life like a Chris Stanley living like an animal. Here's something that changed for me because of Blue Apron. I never under any circumstances, order Chinese takeout because I've learned to make the best Chinese food in the world. And I can start it and finish it before the Chinese takeout would get to my it's, house. It's pretty wild. And they always have one coming up. Like every every other week, there's a right. phenomenal Chinese. Well, I, but I also keep all the menus. Yes. So I keep all the menus. I've got books and books of these menus. And some nights when it's not Blue Apron night, I'll go back and go, this is one of my favorite of all time. I'm going to do it. Blue Apron, join Gail and me in this. It's fantastic. That's blueapron.com slash raw dog. Order right now. Get your first two meals for free. Blueapron.com slash raw dog. Blue Apron, a better way to cook. All right, let's bring in our man, Luis J. Gomez. Luis J. Gomez, the real ass dude. Where's his music? I don't have music for Lewis. Lewis, Lewis J. Gomez. He'll be performing at Levity Live in West Nyack, New York on Thursday, November 5th at 7.30 p.m. For tickets, go to levitylive.com. You can check out Lewis's podcast, Leisure Skanks, live 9 p.m. every Tuesday and Wednesday on anthonycumia.com. On Twitter, it's at Lewis J. Gomez. Lewis, I don't even understand. You do one night at Anthony's studio and one night still at the Creek in the Cave? Yeah. Yeah, we split the uh, the time because when we moved to Anthony's, you know, Rebecca, mm-hmm. who was uh, our, um, you know, you know, she runs Cre- uh, Cave Comedy Radio. She was taking care of us for a long time. We don't want to just say, oh, we're not going to do our live show anymore. Right. So uh, we're very loyal, the Legion of Skanks. And it's a very popular place for people to come and see you guys do your show. Yeah, it's like uh, there's really no other place like the Creek in the Cave. Yeah. It's like a, it's like multi-level kind of comedy like multiplex with like rooms and there's different- and, Re- and Rebecca decides to be sexy mama to the young comedians she <laughs> has sex with them yes yes <laughs> you know but that's their business and her business <laughs> but she takes them in and she moves them along class oh, by class that's what you meant by being sexy mama yes I thought you meant intercourse I didn't mm. know that she did that yeah, neither did I <laughs> okay Didn't we're happen. breaking the story well, here you're one of the young <laughs> <laughs> did I live with her or did I have sex with her? Which one? Did you live with her? No, I never lived there. She, I mean, she doesn't... Yeah, I technically, I guess. You know, here's the thing. If you get drunk or fucked up on drugs at the Creek in the Cave and you're a yeah. comedian, you know that you can just fall asleep on one of the many couches in the place. That's great. Yeah, it's not. It's a safe space for comedians to come in. To overdose. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and die. You want to be comfortable. Yeah. I'm trying to get on the Legion of Skank show. But I decided this because I've been to Ant Studio so many times. I really want to do one of the Creek in the Cave. You'll only do it at the Creek. Yeah. Okay. Well, we can probably make place. it happen. I, I said this before, and I don't want to keep on saying it because I think he's getting mad at me. But I think Big J, because they have the bonfire now, I think he's putting the kibosh on you coming on LOS. I, is it a B, you know, Bennington bonfire, BB? There has thing? been talk uh-huh. about me doing that show, and I'm like, my loyalty is to the skanks. Of course. Yeah. Not to the bonfire. Maybe I can do it in a night that J isn't there. I can be, you know, I could do a fill in thing. Because he's not there a lot now, right? It is true. Yeah. It is he's true. a busy he, guy. He's very busy. The guy, the guy's on the road. He's got the bonfire. Um, sometimes he's, he's just new, tired. Sometimes he just doesn't even come in. He's got a new NBC show. Yeah, he does. Uh, well, it's 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 got the 
It's a buzz. Everybody's a buzz about him right here. I, I, I couldn't be more proud of him, but to take his place as a skank, maybe even permanent if it works out, <laughs> that would be thrilling for me. Well, it would be an honor. For, it would be an yeah. honor for both of us. Right. You know, it would be an honor for both of us for a change. Now you did our Thanksgiving show last year. I did with you're, Mattel and Big J. Yeah. You're a big talks. You're on a short list about doing it again this year. Yeah, well, because, you know, I hope to come back. I enjoyed the food. I enjoyed the company. Yeah. I almost got into a fist fight with fuck. Oh, yeah, that's right. The fist fight or the fuck fist with... <laughs> the yeah. fist fuck. Yeah, the fist fuck, which you don't hear much like you used to uh, years ago about it. But um, now I understood a little birdie told me, and by a little birdie, I mean, Chris, that you have a, a Dan Perlman story. That you wanted to share. It's not even a story. It is, uh, I feel like I, I, I kind of figured out what a bad person Dan Perlman is. Okay. Mm. Uh, That's good for us to Just know. a few days ago. So it's not even so much a story as much as it is, is kind of like, um, I'm like an enlightened about okay. who he is as a human being. All right. Okay. Dan Perlman last week, I don't know if he told you. He never does. Never says anything. I call him, I call him, uh, double DP Dan Perlman. Okay. Cause I like giving people nicknames. That's yeah. great. Yeah. Man. <laughs> Suits him. Uh, so Double DP, Dan Perlman, <laughs> he's at the Roastmaster show at The Stand, yeah. which I host weekly every Tuesday night, 10 o'clock, and he is roast battling a girl named Suba Agarwal. Uh-huh. Now, he gets his dick kicked in. I heard that. Yeah, it was it was a one-sided slobber knocking. Just got his ass hand. Look, he's shaking his head now, but it's not. It was, it was pretty bad. From what I understand, he was also... Uh, being accused of his misogyny, which has come up by you before. Yes, Gail, that clearly. Uh, not only does he hate Puerto Ricans, he also hates women. I love Puerto Ricans and women, and that was not a one-sided battle by any. Who did the judges pick? Oh, she won. She won. Yeah. Okay, that's called a one-sided <laughs> battle. Then it was one on one. Yeah. Who are the judges? Judges were Mike Lawrence, Pat Dixon, and uh, Damian Lemon. I I trust each and every one of those people. Oh, I do too. Yeah. So yeah. you got his ass. He got his they're, ass. They're pros. They yeah. know what they're doing. And here's the deal, right? With these roast battle shows, the women come in at kind of an advantage because you're sure. rooting, you're rooting yeah. for the underdog. Of course. Right. Double DP Dan Perlman usually in life is the underdog. Right. Okay. He's very nerdy. Um, very, he's very lightweight. He's not intimidating. Uh, he's, uh, he's basically a nobody in the comedy community. Right. So nobody is in, usually he's the underdog. Now in this scenario, he's got an Indian girl, little tiny Indian girl. He's immediately at a, uh, a, dis, a disadvantage. Let me ask, make sure this. Native American Indian girl or Indian? Indian? No, no, no. Indian Indian. Okay. okay. That, then I don't even know if that's a disadvantage. I don't know what it was. Um, so he comes in and he loses. Let's say, for the sake of argument, it was a super close battle mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, he just barely lost. The whole show, the roasting portion of it is about 45, 50 minutes. And I have to be there the whole time because I'm not only am I hosting it, but I'm also the timekeeper. I'm the referee. I'm kind right. of going to the judges. So as soon as I get there, I put a food order in. Smart. I, yeah, I, I order a, a burger with no bun because I'm doing the real ass diet, mm. trying to do no carbs. <laughs> uh, and then I order Brussels sprouts on the side. So it's a pile favorite. of Brussels sprouts, delicious. A burger with some cheese, delicious. Just what, And I yeah. knew what was going to happen. I said, I'm going to put it in. I know it's going to come out. It's going to sit there for a little while, maybe get a little cold. But the truth is, I'm hungry. I want to eat as soon as I get off stage. So let me just do this now. Okay. I go. I do the show. I come, A couple times, I run up to go to the bathroom. I look at my food. It's there. It's good. Great. Show's over. I come upstairs. It, it is a like a horror movie. Hmm. I walk over to the table, and I see fucking sad, angry, double DP Dan Perlman fucking squatting over my, my plate, digging his fingers through my burger and my my Brussels sprouts, his not not even a fork, <laughs> digging his fingers into it like a homeless man, what? and shoving it into his face. What? Yeah. Now, did you think it was yours, Dan? Okay. The oh. mis the mistelling of this story is off the charts. I'm going from my perspective. By the way, all I'm right. saying is this is what I saw. I, there's not one bit of this is even slightly exaggerated. Maybe but, how badly he got his ass kicked in the. It wasn't that bad. Was I heard from a good. couple of people. I was robbed the that first time. It was bad. 
No, okay. So first of all, I was I was robbed, and then she rallied all the. So then women you robbed me. Side. You were like, "I'm going to take that feeling and get." Yeah, it you're like, "What are you saying now? The bitches all ganged up on me. Yes. The whores, I the holes. I see where this is going." Yeah. Now let's let's go let's go to the the Brussels sprouts the main event. So I'm upstairs. I thought the burger si- was the main event. I swear to God, too. we're sitting we're sitting at the comic table. Me and Tom Cassidy, and there's this food there that's been there for as long as we've been up there, fifteen twenty minutes. And we say, "Is this anyone's?" And no one's claiming it. We ask the wait staff, "Who's this?" A nobody ghost knows. Ordered it, Dan. Nobody You're right. knows. A ghost, you, it's nobody's <laughs> food, that's Dan. That's smart. So rub your fingers in it. So so we take a, a, a one sprout. We take two, and before you know it. All the sprouts are gone. Now we leave the burger there because we're gentlemen and we don't know what's going on. But here's the thing. And then Lewis comes back. He's like, who the fuck took my food? And it was me and fucking Wormy Cassidy just sees Lewis approaching angrily and darts out the back. Yeah. But how long, how long do you think, I'm asking, you can leave food unattended and expect Forever. it to still no be there? No normal person eats abandoned food. <laughs> also... That is a very specific order. You have a burger Whoa, with no yeah, bun right. and not a side of fries. You have Brussels sprouts. This clearly belongs to someone. This yeah, is not like you, an extra order. There's only one order. comic who has created his own diet that is catching on like it wildfire is. throughout the comedy community, and that's Louis J. Gomez. You should have <laughs> took one glance at that meal and said, I know exactly whose this is. I didn't know there was a real-ass diet cookbook coming out. What? And you you were digging. It. The burger, was some of it was eaten. Cassidy took a bite of that. Okay, well, all I know is when I came up, you were digging your fingers into my plate. You didn't even have the... Disgusting. You were you fingering his burger. I was. You didn't even yeah. get forks. So it wasn't even like if I wanted to still eat, enjoy it, I could have enjoyed it because I have Dan Perlman's shitty fingers Look, in it. Let me tell you something. I've said this for a long time. So Double nice. D-P, Dan Perlman, is an ill-begotten son of a bitch. You have always said that. I've said it before, and I mean it Just now. Say it. You do not get to leave food unattended yes, you for do. that long. Yes, you do. Okay. And he was at work. He was working. He was working. Yeah, I was downstairs. I was in the building. I didn't like leave and then go on a, you know, to another comedy club and I forgot about it. I specifically mm. ordered my food to be waiting for now, me. Now, here's the thing. If I walk down to the refrigerator, I'm sure that there's a bag that no one's written their name on because they're not in second grade. I'm not going to look around an empty kitchen and go, is this anybody's? <laughs> no one's? <laughs> then I'll take out a sandwich. That food, under no circumstances, is your, Dan. No matter... Who it belongs to, it's not you. If they just put the plate on the table and then I start diving in, then I'm a monster. If it's right there, if you see $50, $100 on the table, and it's there for an hour, no one's going to take it? Lewis isn't going to pocket that? You you assume it's a tip for a waitstaff member and you don't take it. Yes, you're among your friends and and, and your And even with your logic. So what? I'm a thief. That still means when I'm caught, I'm a thief. You know what I mean? You got caught stealing. And why would Double DP Dan Perlman want cold Brussels sprouts? I mean, that's just creepy and yeah, it's weird. It's nothing that anyone craves. You it's know what all, I mean? It's like that's almost that, crazy eating. Yeah, that's something that when you're on a forced fucking <laughs> diet. Last night, I took, uh, I said to Chris, I go, would you like something to eat? Uh, and he goes, I don't have any money. I go, I'll pay. So I get there and I said, who will have to chop sell it? And he was yelling, no, I go, you're not paying for it. I want you to eat a chop salad. And he was acting like an infant. And then Too he choppy. screamed at a talkative waitress, I can't. I just can't. And look, I'm not saying, look, and I paid for the food. Cassie After, and I paid well, for the it's, food. It's now a story at the Stan Comedy Club and Restaurant. What a big deal it was for him and Tom Cassidy to come up with the twelve dollars to pay for this. They made they bitched about. It. They're like, dude, can we just pay for the Brussels sprouts and eighty percent of the burger since we didn't eat yeah, the whole burger? I swear to God. But this, Wait, but hold on. You pay for your own food there? They give us a discount. You're a fucking star, Lewis. I know. I've been telling them that. Every time I pay, I say, dude, here, take my coins. I'm Whoever a star. Whoever your fucking agent is, I want to replace them this second. They own the With comedy you. club. With you. Your agent owns the comedy <laughs> club and they charge you. <laughs> Unbelievable. And then they take a percentage of what I pay for the food. I am, Here's the two things I'm going to do. I'm going to take over your fucking career and I'm going to open up a club right next to the stand. This is what I'm deciding to do with my... Now, this will make 
two clubs that you're banned from, Dan. <laughs> you can't use my thing, and you can't. Uh, my new place is called The Understand, and it's just going to oh. be a little bit lower than the stand. <laughs> the Understand. It's got a kind name, too. How could your agents charge you for food? Well, they're my managers, and uh, yeah, I mean, they, uh, that's a separate. It's a separate business. They they run a comedy club. You know what it is? People say this all the time, and I always like to refer back to the UFC or for everything. But people are like, oh, you know, uh, Viacom owns Bellator, which is the UFC's biggest like competitor. It's like they've got endless money. It's like, well, no, that's not. Bellator is a specific business. Viacom has a bunch, you know, so it's not like because they own a restaurant, they get to just give everybody free food. That's a separate business, and they have to run it as such. I had a comedy club. The fucking comics ate free. Yeah. If they tried anything, I'd go like this. Hey, hey, hey. No, you might no, no good here. If they go, oh, I want to at least give the girls a tip, I go, hey, don't worry about that. We don't tip our waitresses yeah. here. We are starting a whole fucking new thing. They yeah. get nothing. Every time they put every time they put a bill on the table, you put another bill next to theirs and you push it toward them. Right. Yeah. I mean, my, all my waitresses were runaways anyway. I mean, yeah. It was very... It worked skit. out well for you, though. Yeah, but you know, sometimes you had to kill some of them so they wouldn't talk, though. <laughs> All right, now explain to people at home the difference between a manager and an agent. Uh, I really, I, ju- I learned this like six months ago. Okay. Okay. Um, and I, I can use an analogy for it, not okay. UFC related, because that last one didn't work too well. No, it did. <laughs> no, Everybody loved it. Um, like, uh, let's say you're, you know, you're, um, you're open for business. Like, like let's say I'm a pizzeria, right? Like, yeah, Louis nice. Shake Gomez Pizza. Cool. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I have a manager run my day-to-day operations, okay? So they'd come in, they'd do the drawers, they'd hire people, fire people, all this other stuff, right? And it would be my agent's job to get, uh, that's really, it doesn't work, the analogy doesn't work, (laughs) but it's almost like my agent's job to like sell my pizza on a much larger scale and make it like, um, like, you know, build a brand out of it and sell it. Uh, well, what's maybe get more change. Your life? You know, the pizzeria analogy yeah, doesn't work with it. It worked yeah. when I got it, when I first got a manager, it really worked when I was describing what my manager does. I was like, dude, it's like yeah. fucking pizza. They're in there. They're just fucking making the pizza. Every here's day. The thing. What does a manager do for you? Um, well, I'm, what I do mean, you need to be managed about? It's, I mean, literally it's everyday bullshit. It's like instead of me emailing the booker for Conan, it's them doing it. It just looks better. You're also going to get Why a much can't more. the agent fucking. Email Seems the like booker. they should be able to do that. They, I think they do both. That's what I'm trying to tell you. Do you have an agent and a manager? I don't have an agent. I just have a manager. Okay, so you have an agent. <laughs> yeah, well, you know what? <laughs> they, he kind of does the agent job as well. <laughs> That's all. I can see if you had an agent and a manager. I don't want you to do both. <laughs> an agent actually books you on stuff. The manager manages what you get booked on. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, if you're an agent. Let, let me be your agent. You could be my agent. Then I'm going to call up the stand and tell him I'm trying to work a deal to get you free food. This is but task number one. But fucking take somebody's food. Yeah, let's not forget. I thought you started. took his free food, and mm. I was already annoyed. I was, Double P was fine paying for it, but let this be a lesson. And and Dave Dave Smith agreed. He was on your side until you, you found out about the forty five minutes, and he agreed. Hold you on, can't hold leave wait. for forty five. Don't bring minutes. that Dave Smith shit around here and act like we're all going to yeah. fall in line. That means something when you're fucking standing in line for an open mic. But we're we've been around the fucking block a few times. Don't fucking just drop Dave Smith's name. We're all going to go. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> I guess he's right. Uh, Dave Smith. He's got some credits. He's just another guy on the jury, and he also doesn't have credits. Yeah. Well, he's without credits. I'm trying to say this. I'm If Jay comes back, I'm looking to replace Dave Smith. I'm going to replace somebody on that show. <laughs> I'm going to sleep on the couch one night. So your whole thing is you want to turn it into a bigger issue. You want to, and here's, uh, this is Dan, yeah. this is a very shady move, right? Right. He wants to step back from like, oh, it's like, oh, dude, you know, let's ignore the fact that I'm a filthy thief. That right. I just yeah. stole from another comedian in the comedy community. And you let's can. look at the bigger issue of like, what is the time limit that a food becomes, you know, free for the world? You know, that, no, you don't get to do you know that. What? You know what? A guy will say that. I'll try to fucking figure out how to steal jokes. Still be going like, yeah, I mean, the thing is, I did change the joke from poor chops to fucking. Uh, cheese steaks. Mm-hmm. And you're like, it's the same joke, dude. That's a very big and dangerous leap to take from Brussels sprouts. And I'm, I'm not glad wild to do about it. that. I'm glad to take no, a leap like I, I that. I gotta disagree with that. Here's something else. The, the only circumstance in which you could eat that food is if the owner, the orderer of said food gave you permission. So what if it had been a complete stranger? What if it had not been right. Louis J. Gomez? Who was, had stomach cramps? 
And we're shitting for 45. Yeah. Well, we thought we were under the impression because the show had ended and people were leaving. So we thought someone just left us there. Sick. Someone left their food. They ordered it. Maybe they, you know, met you somebody know and b- bailed. One thing I know from reading In Cold Blood is they always end up blaming each other. You know what I mean? The two fucking lowlifes, and I'm just going to call it what it is. Joke thieves have said to themselves, <laughs> no, 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 no. You tell jokes and you're a thief, you're a joke thief. That's the way I say it. No, Hashtag joke thief. You know what? I'd rather somebody took my joke than my fucking cheeseburger when yeah. I'm fucking starving. Yeah, joke is well, a What's a compliment? Yeah, I'm not going to sit there <laughs> fucking starving going like this. Well, at least I still have my humor. <laughs> now, these fucking, this ring of joke thieves is running around New York. Stealing people's money. Yeah. You know what? Ever since we get the new ma- mayor, this place is going to fucking shit. This is exactly what they're talking about. Yeah. I, the thing that's really sticking out to me most, and I just don't understand it, it's a restaurant. They have silverware. Why would you put your dirty fingers in my food? There were no there were no silverware nearby. I mean, no, I promise you, you if you would stand up, turn three feet behind you, there's a drawer of silverware that that's where it is. Or, uh, you know, what, I would have also, I'd give him, I would say it's okay if somebody else that worked there was like, you know what, dude, we don't know who that belongs to. Right. Just dig in, guys. That's what someone said. Someone said they don't know who it belongs Who's to. Someone, someone who worked there. Someone who worked there. Who's someone? People have names. M. M. You asked the the greeter at the front door that does, has nothing to do with the kitchen staff. She was sitting there. What you about? Know what? I, I would ask her if there was a table open, <laughs> but not who a fucking cheeseburger belongs to. Hey, do you have my reservation? Did you spell my name right? Well, assume those are questions too that much. that make sense for a greeter at the door. Who are we calling? Yeah, well, we're M? gonna hold them. Let's let's hold the stand right now. I'm gonna fire them as your manager. Who else do they manage besides you? Big J. Big J, they manage. Yeah. Well, why aren't they giving you all these gigs that they're getting big fucking J? I don't know. Big J, fucking hand over face. He's very talented, this guy. Yeah, he's brilliant. He's Let's a brilliant, fucking face. He's a brilliant he's comedian. Awesome. Him and Dan Soder. Fucking so funny. God damn it. Why won't they at least have you on the bonfire? Uh, they said they're not doing any guests, but then they brought on David Tell. Yeah. yeah. Well, I don't blame him for that. Yeah. He's great, too. Understandable. Are you kidding me? Still. I'm just hoping all the people with talent die, and then it'll, I, I'll just kind of like move my way up. You can't count on that, though, dude. Because you think younger, more talented people are going to catch up to me? No, it's just that life fucking, you know, doesn't work out where everyone dies at the same time. I mean... Dan and Jay, are, they're going on the road a lot together. If their tour bus should just flip over... I know, but... It, know, would, it would do great things for my career. I'm going to say First of all, I didn't know they had a tour bus, but that's fucking fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> that management is unbelievable. Um, <laughs> Here's what we're going to do, and, and I'm going to be like, uh, like fucking, was it King Solomon who did the good judging? Uh, yeah, King Solomon. Solomon. Yeah. Solomon did the, uh, the, the next baby. time that I get lunch for everybody on the show, Dan will not get lunch, but be forced to sit and watch everybody eat. That, that, that seems extreme, but I, I accept it. You can, you can order. And then we'll just eat what you were supposed to eat. Yeah, I, I like the idea of that. I like, ask them to put Dan on his burger. Yeah, then I'm just going to fucking then... jam my fingers into your food in front of you. Lewis, Lewis can have my sides there. Now, here's the deal on this, Lewis. When you don't order the bun, they, they charge you the same amount as everybody they do. else? They mm-hmm. do. Then you should say, give me the bun to take home to my fucking kid. <laughs> give me the two buns in a separate plastic bag. Just throw it in the garbage can in front of them. I'm so worried your kid is going to fucking jail. Just Why would he do? Just the way I see him punching dogs, and he's got <laughs> very zero, tough. Yeah, he's got zero fear, zero. <laughs> I'm toughening him up, man. That's a tough little dog right there. Yeah, yeah. So I that's. Well, what what is your plans for the kid? What um, do you hope to do with him? Well, he got bullied recently. Really? Yeah. So he, that's, that's I legitimately funny. have to toughen him up. We uh, we brought him to the park, and this little boy just kept on pushing him like into the corner. Right. And my kid just fucking coward yeah it's a real coward mm. coward of the it. county yeah play that fucking song for him over and over it'll get to him he just he kind of cowered in fear in the corner and then his mom came over and yelled at the little boy and then the little boy cried nice it was the whole thing here's the thing if he gets into trouble like that again call me i'll get my big brother and my big sister come over and stump that fucking little kid that's what they used to do for me yeah well another works. another time a girl bullied him in front of me she took his ball yeah and 
you know, you you almost want to say to him, it's like, you could hit her. You're only like two and a half. Right. Like, you're not going to get in any trouble. Yeah. You, it's not going to, like, come back to haunt you later on in life. Well, also, if he has something sharp, I mean, you could teach this to any kid. Just jab that other kid in the thigh. You don't cut, you know, anything that's Above gonna, the neck. Yeah, yeah, I mean, that's fucking animalistic. But a little sh- shot, a little sharp thing in the thigh. I mean, it hurts like hell. It goes right into muscle. Even just a prod will do. You know what I mean? What do you mean by a prod? I never. Like, you know, it doesn't have to stick in forever. You, can, you just push it in. Push like, in, in and pull it out. Like get an invitation? Yeah. Well, wow, I would never even try that. It wouldn't even dawn on me. I mean, I want, look, here's the, if he doesn't understand it now because he's not even three yet, but, you know, you got to kind of put it into your kids. Like, if you think somebody's going to hit you, you have to hit them first. You can't just give them a little prod. See, the, you have to put them thing. down and you have to fucking, you know, look, that's how you, that's you, how you stop a bully. You could have been an uncle of mine because they used to say <laughs> hit first if you think it's, and then they would say if something, somebody says, and they used to say smart mouth. If someone smart mouth you, you got to hit them because that's just leading to them hitting. It's you. just a dumb family. It's and if, if anybody's smart yeah. around you, you hit them right yeah. in the face. <laughs> yeah, they <laughs> felt like that was showing off. If someone bragged about anything, <laughs> you got to stop. Whoever those the fuckers. number one student is in the class, you guys stomp him the fuck out after school. They're trying every to make time. you feel bad about yourself. I, I was taught when I was a kid, wait till somebody hits you, and yeah, then you know, eye for an eye. That's way too late. Then you got a fucking bloody nose. You have right. damage. You're now you're only fighting at ninety percent. Yeah. Chris, you had said that when you were a kid living in New York, you spent a lot of fearful time, and you stayed in your apartment. Oh, yeah, a lot, a lot of just hanging out in the apartment watching old TV. And you would look out the window and see the bigger kids and worry? Like, I hope they don't ever get me when I go out to do something? Like, I hope, if my parents send me out to cig- for cigarettes, I hope I don't have to, you know, deal with these assholes. Did these uh, anyone ever uh, <laughs> mug you, take any of your money or anything? Uh, I was mugged once, but I was very, I was like very young, like coming home from like middle school. What'd they take? It took like, I had like three dollars on me. (laughs) What do you have? Three bucks. Mm -hmm. In retrospect, it doesn't seem that bad. (laughs) (laughs) But when you're a kid, it's like they took everything that you had. (laughs) It's like you with your cheeseburger. And your pride. (laughs) Fucking Dan Perlman and his friend. I forget the friend's name. Tom Cassidy. I just said a bitch, Tom Cassidy. (laughs) Who, by the way, Chris, I want to know everything about this bastard. Done. This fucking Hopalong Cassidy, this, fucking this Butch Cassidy, and his Sundance kid. Brussels spout wanna, eating motherfucker. Yeah. I want to know what they're up with. Got okay? it. Okay? Got it. I'm going to fucking track them. Why don't you plug Louis still? Louis J. Gomez will be performing at Levity Live in West Nyack, New York on Thursday, November 5th at 7.30 p.m. On Twitter, it's at Louis J. Gomez. Go to levitylive.com for tickets, and you can check out Louis's podcast, Legion of Skanks, live at 9 p.m. every Tuesday and Wednesday. Go to anthonycumia.com. Um, what the fuck? Did it turn off again? Well, yeah, but it's it's giving me the number instead of the name. Weird. Uh, <clears throat> and I'm on a group, and nobody's even mentioned in the group. But apparently, a friend of mine's going in. And they're having surgery on. Wednesday emergency surgery, but I don't know who it is. So you don't even know if it's really a friend. Uh, I'm gonna assume it's a friend. I mean, they're being really, you know, cross our fingers. It's an enemy. (laughs) And I can't tell you how fucking outgoing they're being with me. (laughs) If it's an enemy, I'm gonna be like, yes. Uh, What emojis would you use if it was an enemy? Eggplants. Um. All right, Tom Cassidy is up to, we've got to figure out, and here's the easiest way to get close to him. That fucking rat, Double D, uh, Double P, DP. uh Dan Perlman, will do anything, right? He'll yes. sell out anybody. He will. He so sings like a bird. we can easily get him to set up this guy so we could all jump him and put the boots to him. Perfect. Yeah. I can't yeah. wait to do this. They turn on each other. He, he really did. Not only did he do it all, not only did he use his shitty fingers, but then he just Ugh. passed the blame onto another comedian. In cold blood. Who's not even here, who's not even here to defend himself. Um, do me a favor. Just get me like an artist sketch drawing of Tom Cassidy so I know. <laughs> right. Wine posters. What's that? I actually have one right here for where's, you. Where's that at? Where, where can I find that? <laughs> It's on his Twitter page. Uh, Twitter page. Okay. At so it's on his, comedy. Yeah. So, all right. I think I'll be able to recognize this guy now thanks to this <laughs> artist rendering. Done, Cassidy. Like, 
<laughs> I'll tell you this, he looks good. I mean, yeah. I don't know if he looks that good in real life, but I wish there was a sketch of me that looked like that. Yeah, it's a handsome sketch for sure. What about the thing that used to me? People are dressing up like us at Halloween. I know. Is that crazy or what? We had a, a, a Scope Talk Live Halloween costume. But nobody was dressed like Chris? No, it was just You're me awesome. and you. It was just the panel. You know who I want to replace uh, Chris with with Scope huh? Talk Live? Huh? Uh, Tom Cassidy. He seemed, no. there's a lot of buzz on him right yeah. now. I <laughs> actually like him. Yeah. After seeing the sketch of him. He's ballsy. He's, he's willing to take the shot. Yeah. <laughs> he'll fucking grab a burger for you. He's got you two arms. arms. Yeah. There's a host of Scope Talk Live, STL. Yeah, maybe he'll steal some good ideas, though, expand the show. Louis J. Gomez, you had a scope that made me laugh my ass off. It, you were up in Poughkeepsie, and you're too opening acts and you were asking the uh the waitress where to go and she said the river everyone just goes to the river and then you were telling the opening act you better leave some of that river on the bone for me when i get out there because you know what they were gonna do i think you saw the wheels turning with these right. fucking assholes yeah they're like dude we're gonna just talk about the river the whole time 15 minutes of easy laughs on the river right that's you know, you know you're in a fucking <laughs> shitty town. So what do you guys do for fun after the shows? Oh, we usually just go throw rocks into the river. But you were telling the girl who lived there, this is a dull place. This is an awful place. Yeah. <laughs> I know people, she was proud of her hometown. I mean, they got a river. You know what yeah, I mean? Sure, it sounds just, great. Yeah, it's, it's bringing water in and out. But that was the best she could come back with. When yeah. I was like, what? I was like, this place kind of sucks. And she was like, no, 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 no. You haven't been to the river yet. Then she says, don't go to the river at night. Don't go to the river. So at it's night. only a daytime event. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> if you don't watch Luis J. Gomez on Periscope, you're insane because he's you're either going to get family stuff, you're going to get business stuff, yeah. or just hilarity. And by the way, there's quite a bit of information that yeah. he shares yeah. on there. Yeah, I'm a leader. Yeah, uh, I call it Luis Scope. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Hashtag Luis Scope. So you guys can search them Smart. out. And they, you know what, the Periscope, they let you have it, like they give you the video. So I think you can actually take the videos and put them on YouTube afterwards because they expire, right? I know that they they put Chris's up there. They love ripping But I like the idea of them expiring. I like the idea of you got to be there to see it. It's gone, you know? It makes it more immediate. Um, yeah. People complain. They're like, dude, you Periscope way too much. But here's the thing. You got, I have to have it on at all times because something crazy is going to happen one right. day, and then I, I will be the guy who fucking periscopes some dude getting hit by a bus. That'll be fair. Fa- I love that. I'm, I really mean that. I think it would be worth it. Like, that guy's life is worth the amount of retweets and hits that I would get on my periscope. Is there anything that would be like, this is too personal for me to, to get retweets on? Like, yeah, you would fucking have a stranger get hit by a car. Anybody would put that up. But would you put a family member who just got hit by a car? Would you immediately You're start? Just like, hey, guys, <laughs> uh, we're in the ambulance right now. Um, we don't know how this is going to pan out. Right. Oh, good, good. <laughs> Thanks for the hearts. <laughs> oh, shit. The hospital doesn't have Wi-Fi. I'm fucked. <laughs> Shitty signal, dude. <laughs> I like that they always blame people for that. Yeah, yeah, like, your phone sucks. Fucking obnoxious. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry that I can't control the way all of this shit works. <laughs> These fucking... It's pixelated. Oh. What, what am I supposed to do, asshole? This literally it costs me 80 cents a minute to do this fucking thing for you people. I paid $45 for <laughs> Wi-Fi at the fucking Skrillex show. What does that mean exactly? Who did you pay the, the venue event. No, Skrillex. Like, he actually collected the money. <laughs> Thanks, Skrillex. He, he put it in a little tip jar <laughs> right next to his laptop. Great. Screw the Wi-Fi. Now Thanks so much. Connection. <laughs> Chris, have you booked uh, Tom Cassidy on the show yet? Not yet. I'm uh, tracking him down. We're either going to get him to roll over on Double DP or, you know, we're going to make his life a living hell. He's got to either just gotta pick. cut this cord... With Dan Perlman, or if he really wants to be one of us. I feel like after this great artist rendering him, <laughs> I want to just spend a lot of time with him. Cassie's at a fork in the, in the road right now. Like, I'm here a good th- Now I'm here, and he's a Philly guy. And you know, I like guy, the Philly yeah. guys. Yeah. Maybe we'll love him. I already do love him. <laughs> what am I saying? You know, I think it's going to be very telling when you get him in here. Yeah. Uh, to see if he immediately blames Double DB Tam- Dan Perlman. I bet you <laughs> he seems like the type of guy that would just go, no, you know what, dude? It was my idea. I'm sorry. What a classy fucking wow. guy. Tom I Cassidy. actually like wow. Tom Cassidy. Yeah, me too. 
Yeah. Big ups. I'm going to call him Tom Butch Cassidy. I mean, we actually haven't even considered the possibility that Tom Cassidy might have nothing to do with this whole thing. I'm and he's starting, a patsy. I'm even starting to think that it was his cheeseburger and sprouts. <laughs> Why would you say it? it's yours? Tom Cassidy wasn't even there that night. I know this. His mother has a garden, and all she grows is Brussels sprouts. So why, ladies and gentlemen of the jury, would we want them? Now, sometimes when you when you come in, Lewis, I want you to bring your opening axe with you, too. I will. Because I like the way you manhandled them. Yeah. Um, you let them know they were out on the road. They were lucky to be there. Yeah. They could be replaced at any second. Well, and, that's because that's what they do. You yeah. go, you go like you, you let them know, like, hey, dude, no, no, no you're fucking replaceable. Right. Because what they like to do is they think it's like, in, like we're, we have this give, given, you know, we're both giving an equal amount. Like, oh, dude, you know, I'm driving you to fucking Poughkeepsie. You're giving me the spot. We're even. That's not yeah. what it is. It's not what it is at all. There's a million comics with cars that would drive me to Poughkeepsie. It could have been Double DP Dan Perlman, but I wouldn't trust that he owned the car that we were in. <laughs> no, probably not. <laughs> Fucking thief. I, I would be afraid that the cops are going to pull us <laughs> over. Drives up <laughs> and one of the windows is kicked out. And you sit down glad. Better put your coat down. <laughs> <laughs> Louis J. Gomez, he's in studio. He'll be performing at Levity Live in West Nyack, New York this Thursday, November 5th at 7.30 p.m. Go to levitylive.com for tickets on Twitter. It's at Louis J. Gomez. And you can check out Legion of Skanks, 9 p.m. every Tuesday and Wednesday on anthonycumia.com. Did that manager of yours get you this gig? This one here? Yeah. Uh, on the show today? Yeah. Okay, good. They were the ones. All right. Mm. They, they got you Levity Live. That's... Uh, no, they didn't get me Levity Live. They didn't. I thought you were saying on the show today. Well, did they... <laughs> what, this <laughs> gig? Yeah, this gig. <laughs> okay, great. So they are doing fantastic doing work for things for me. But when, they, when you get a gig like this on your own, you got to give them a taste. No, not really. No. Maybe I do. I, maybe I'm supposed to. I don't know. I don't Normally feel like I'm making do. them any money. I make money, and then like I feel like I I feel like they're going to hit me with a bill one day of like right. back commissions. Yeah, Instead but let me tell you something for them. You're going to be, and I see this coming. You're going to be a giant fucking star. Thank you're you. You're going to no. fucking whip past everybody because you've got what I call the it factor. Thank you. You know what I mean? You can't fucking explain it. I wish I could put it into a bottle. And then I would have uh, Double DP, Dan Perlman, fucking chug this. Just chug it when nobody's looking. <laughs> Stick his fingers right there and the chug on it. Oh. Is that guy licking the end of that bottle? Yeah. <laughs> Why are you going to put his nasty fingers and everything? <sighs> and then you can't go to these roast battles and lose. Whether you like it or not, you represent the show. you got to win. Win, damn it. I honestly, I honestly felt like I got her bad. And then if I'm going to be honest, we each agreed to one thing that we would not talk about. And I respected that thing. And then if you remember, Louis, she got very angry okay. at a different joke I made. All right, let's not, let's not thing. fucking but be around the bush. Let's be honest. What was the thing? What, yeah, what happened? Well, I mean, it's like, it's personal shit on each of our parts. So not you, you reveal. said you wouldn't make fun of her club foot. <laughs> and then club, what yeah. did she have on you? What do you worry about? It's not about me. It's about family shit. But hold on. Here's the thing. This is what she I knows your family. No, she knows stuff that I've said in private conversation. You're giving too much away to these yeah. people. I trust too much. This is a big problem. Your mom's having an affair right now, and you didn't want that to come up during <laughs> is roast that what battle. It is? Well, <laughs> you, just, my you just won the roast battle. Affair. What? God damn it! <laughs> <laughs> he just jokes her. <laughs> you said that was wrong. You fucking god. So she said about your thing about your mom having an yeah, affair. Yeah, and and honestly, she she won it. Cause she, I mean, she got the better reaction and shit. And but you saw it after. I was fine after, and she was so just, angry. She's eating food with your fingers. We're fine. She, uh, she was pouting. Did she go to? Did she go talk she was to mad. you? She, she didn't was talk to me. Very, she was very mad. mad. She was very. Mad. Question, what was the thing? Because uh, we already said her name, so obviously we can't say it. But what was the thing she wasn't allowed to talk about with you? It was just. It was anything about me was fine. It was just some personal family shit that, about about you. B- yeah about my family. Yeah. What is that stuff? Well, why would if I didn't want to say she it there? I want to say it here. She already said it though, right? Say again? It's already out there. It's out there. No, it's not. Okay. Mm. I thought she said it. She said it live. That's what we're trying to say. Yeah, yeah it's out there. Everyone knows well, now. Well, why don't you say whatever it is about her, because we don't even know her. Well, is no, it I a still, club I foot? I still don't want to do it. It's the club foot. It's, it, it's foot? both. It's both feet. Is it a club physical thing? That's very fucking fixable. They had sex. They did hook up. Is that oh, what she that didn't it? want to talk about? 
No, that that was fine. We did hook up and talked about that. And then she, ha- uh, I said I was going to do a thing, and then she had a funny retort about that. So all that shit was fine. But even though she won, she was very angry afterwards and yeah. took all of it very personally. Are you going to tell us off the air what she was angry about? Yeah, I'll tell you off the air. All right. I feel like I'm one of the ATM. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> He's always fucking ATM with this guy. <laughs> you know, here's the thing, though. Nobody has any problems with MTA. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. So just I prefer mouth, it. Yeah, mouth, <laughs> mouth the ass is the way to go, everybody. <laughs> That's it. No yes. one's ever going to say, what are you doing? <laughs> this works perfectly. Yeah. The, the woman's never going to yell out, <laughs> now there's spit in my ass. <laughs> I, in fact, I wish it was more M pre A. <laughs> really make this better. Try more M before you get to the A. <laughs> really does wonders for the A. Now this girl, she was mad that you brought up about Tom Cassidy and you double teaming her. Is that, that what was it, it is? Because that's the way you I. double team that burger. That's a classy. It was sprouts. It was sprouts. Yeah. That's a classy French thing to do. Just because you yeah. only eat a portion of the burger doesn't mean you only ate it at the, the sprouts. That's I didn't, have, a, I didn't you know, have any of the burger. I just had the side. You could have had that burger. I wasn't going to bring this up, but were you? was it too late to even order something else? It was. The kitchen was closed. I, I That's knew a it. lie. Oh, That's a lie. Fuck. I swear yeah, to fucking God, story I story couldn't ever. order food. I knew that was going to be It's the a case. 10 o'clock show, yeah. okay? This is 12 o'clock. There's no other show after that. It's a Tuesday night. The kitchen was closed. The kitchen was closed. I and knew I mean, that you're eating on a diet of your own invention, so it's not like you can go out and find places. Yeah. No, I have to. I mean, it's very difficult to maintain the real ass diet. There's very yeah. specific things and parameters that I have to stay within. And <laughs> you may, you, dude, I literally had, you know what I do? I had to eat fucking nuts. That was my dinner that night. Oh. I just ate nuts like a squirrel. Oh, God. Yeah. And then remember what uh, Dan said? Why don't you try these nuts? <laughs> fucking yeah. Fuck yeah. Up, man. yeah. Why would you oh, say that to him after what you did? Well, you just lost the roast battle to that girl that did it asked the If he would have done that joke at the roast battle, he would have won. I guess Dan had roasted nuts. Why you, have you Joe ever won any of these roast battles, Dan? That was the first one I did. He's 0 and 1. You're already oh, getting a reputation oh. as a joke thief. How did Tom but, Cassidy do that? A joke thief loser. <laughs> yeah. Was Tom on it that night? No, I don't think so, no. What was he still doing there? He was just there. He was just there stealing food. <laughs> he just hangs around kitchens around town. Why is he dressed up like a hot dog there? Because that's what he does. He wants people to know, I will steal your food. Oh. <laughs> like, I'm going to eat this later. <laughs> food stealing comic. He's, he's like a cat burglar, but he wears mm. food costumes. Yeah, I don't get it. I don't get it. TC. You got a nickname for him yet? Cassidy Comedy. TC, yeah. uh... No, I'll think of one. TC is Top Cat. You know, you can oh, always go Top for Top Cat. Cat Tom Cassidy. Top Cat Tom Cassidy. Yeah. I like it. I feel like we should try to, because we like Tom more than Dan Perlman. Oh, well, yeah. You should unfollow Dan Perlman on Twitter and follow Cassidy Comedy on Twitter. Uh, Cassidy's uh, great. I support that. First of all, I don't know if anyone follows Dan Perlman <laughs> on Twitter. Very few people. All right. Um, we've got a man that was part of the Sprout. The Sprout. It's Top Cat himself. Tom Cat's here? Yeah. The old Tom Cat. <laughs> Tom Cassidy. Tom Cassidy. Hey, guys. Thanks for having me. First of all, this story, you know, you have such a great reputation and artist rendering of you. Mm-hmm. We're shocked to hear this sprout stealing story that you and Dan Perlman apparently mastermind it. Yeah, I'm not proud of it at yeah. all. Can I also, before you even speak, Tom, uh, first, you know, I really like you as a person. I really respect you. So you should know coming into this, the double DP Dan Perlman <laughs> completely threw, threw you under the bus and that said everything true. was your no, idea. That's not true. That is, that is what happened. I will. He, Dan was the first person to take a sprout. Interesting. Um, but then, I, and then I took a sprout and then, you know, it, you know how he, but, Tom, that's why I beg you, pick your friends, okay? You don't want to be hanging around with those people. Because I know it's like when your kid, someone's grabbing a sprout. Oh, you don't sure. want to look like you're a pussy. You yeah. want to grab a sprout, too. I know? jumped off a bridge once. <laughs> 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 I, I, Ron, I, I, I did jumped off the hunger. Empire State Building. <laughs> I, had, uh, I had not eaten much that day. Oh, I took one. I took I'm one. Sorry. There was a burger in front of us. It was out there. It's 45 minutes. I mean, I listen, I think we were wrong to do it. 
And when Lewis started trucking toward that table, I got out of there quick. Smart. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but uh, you know, it ha- I, I take full responsibility with Dan, although I would give him 51% of the uh, blame. He took more of the blame. Of blame. That's, you said he was going to be a classy guy. You were right about guy. Top Cat. Nope. Yeah. Great guy. This Great could guy. Be, I, I think I got the perfect way of, of settling this, too. I know that, you know, Tom Cassidy, a Philly guy, what if he took you out with him to see the movie Creed and that he sat next to you, Lewis, and then he could explain all the Philly Rocky stuff that's in the movie. Like scene by scene, like that's by, really yeah. Philly, that's a sound stage. <laughs> right. That, oh, that is I'm Joe like, Frazier's gym. Yeah. That kind of stuff. But then we'd have to come up with some real-ass diet-approved snacks for the theater, which is hard to do. Nuts. Right. Right. It's hard to do. It's a lot of nuts. Yeah. One way, if we're seeing Creed, we're seeing it the day it comes out. That's yeah. all it, it's, sure. Uh, I'm saying uh, that, yeah. too. I think everybody's saying it the day it comes out. Yeah. I was already Sounds told to that's a demand. <gasps> oh, yeah. because you're, your guy's a Upper Derby guy. That's right. Upper yeah. Derby Zone. Upper Derby Zone. And he demands to see Creed for a step. Yes, and he said to me, we'll see it, and we must see it in the theater, and I would like to see it first day. All right. I'm going to tell you this. I already, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do a spoiler alert. At the end of the movie, he's going to cry because they do almost like a Star Wars thing where you're going to see Apollo Creed, you know, like in blue, waving. <laughs> waving. <laughs> waving and Paulie like will be Obama. there. I don't want to give that away. Adrian's dead, so she'll be no. waving. Yeah, Adrian passed away from old age. That's how long this fucking movie's so going to be. With the end of Scrooge, they're all singing, yeah. put a little love in your heart. I love that scene. Beautiful. I love that scene. The, the funniest thing about the Creed trailer is when the... Apollo's son meets Rocky. And he starts he's, putting his fingers in the other guy's yeah. food. Well, mm-hmm. that, that's, that's, a, that's the follow up. But no, and he's like, he's like, oh, this was the 15th round in the fight against Apollo. And Rocky's like, how do you know all this about Apollo? And he's like, I'm his son. It's like, well, I don't know. It's also like a really famous boxing match <laughs> right. in this fictional world. Right. But I, I was on the set for Creed. And when he does arms wide open, oh, uh, <laughs> brings down oh. the house. Still good. Still good after, even after the madness. <laughs> All right, we want to be friends with Tom Cassidy. He's a stand-up guy. Um, obviously, we no longer want to be friends with Dan Perlman. Cassidy. Yeah. <laughs> he admits his faults. That takes I a bigger man. It takes a bigger man to admit it when he's wrong, admit yeah. that it's his fault. And that's the lesson he'll learn today. The bigger lesson is how long... Ken, before you finger fuck your friend's foods, how long is it okay? That's not the lesson. The lesson is that when you get caught, you say, hey, dude, I fucked up. up. Yeah. Yeah. I fucked up. And that's okay. We all fuck up. That's not, I, do you know how much, do you know how much bad shit I've done in my life? Just stealing somebody's food. If that was the worst thing I've ever done in my life, then I'm a saint. You know what I'm saying? But I would always own up to it. Yeah, once you bust it. Yeah, I felt like an Oliver Twist character, to be honest with you. Uh, hey, Tom, what part of Philly did you grow up in? Uh, Roxborough. All right, that's a fucking rough part of town, too. So this guy can, this kid probably could probably beat Creed in the fight, I'm going to say. I think, he I think he's a up, product he of his up. environment. Yeah, he is. It's not his own, it's not even his fault. This no. Is, yeah. I mean, the fact that he's only stealing cheeseburgers and Brussels sprouts means that he's probably a pretty stand up guy considering the pieces of garbage that he grew up yeah. with. You know what we could do? We could turn around and like mentor him from this point on. You know, get him into a nice business school. You know, give him a little seed money to get started. This is great. Yeah, this is all going to work out. I mean, all that's all I really need is a positive influence in my life. I know. Maybe then you'll stop raping. (laughs) (laughs) You know what? Or we could make it. You know how they like um, they take like internet hackers and make them work for the government, right? Maybe he can start his own business where he goes into restaurants and and shows their weaknesses and how people are stealing food from them. <laughs> Perfect. I love that. Like, hey, don't keep it under that lamp for too long. <laughs> keep the lamp back where everybody can't reach it. I'm loving I'll be the this. guy who watches the, uh, the the sandwiches that were out for 45 minutes. Oh, I love those. I love I love an old sandwich. <laughs> love it. It gets you know? better. Yeah. It gets better. The flavor <laughs> really seeps in. Yeah, it gets crustier. The cheese know? congeals a little bit. Right. Oh, yeah. And the mayo. Oh. So warm. <laughs> yeah, what, if, what if that's how I eat my food? What if yeah. I enjoy a uh, room temperature burger and Brussels sprouts? Right. I heard that another friend of ours who has done the show recently... Ate some bad red lobster. Well, I shouldn't even say the name of it. I'll just say it's from a seafood camp. <laughs> <laughs> and um, <laughs> suffered a little bit. Uh, but I'm like, why would anyone, you know what I mean? What else do you think is going to happen to you there? Yeah, 
Yeah. You got to come and see. And his initials, I'll just give it his initials, A.B. A.B. Antonio Banderas. He was here today. Isn't that weird? Oh, my God. Are you kidding me? He was me? here, no. and, and we were both going into the bathroom at the same time, and then he let me, like, cross in front of me. He's like, no, you go first. He was I really, really like really some nice. sparks. Yeah. Really yeah. Flying my my and- mom used to love him. Well, I think the, that, well, the world loved him. Yeah. The world loved him. Remember that, was it Desperado? Was it the name yep. of the movie that he was the mm-hmm. scary Mexican guy? So sexy. He was great. All right, uh, Tom Cassidy, we'll talk to you soon, buddy, all right? Okay, thanks for having me, guys. Have a good uh, day. Peace. Classy Let's get him guy. in here immediately. Classy guy. I'm, she just, he's everything I wanted Dan to be. Tomcat, Tomcat coming in. I like Tomcat, Tomcat, dude. Tom Cassidy. Yeah. Luis J. Gomez is in studio performing at Levity Live in West Nyack, New York, this Thursday, November 5th at 7.30 p.m. Go to levitylive.com for tickets. On Twitter, it's at Luis J. Gomez. And Legion of Skanks is on live, 9 p.m. East, every Tuesday and Wednesday on anthonycumia.com. If I could also plug my uh, my other podcast, too. Yeah. On Stand Up New York Labs, the Real Ass Podcast. Uh, that's every Friday at 12 noon, standupnewyorklabs.com, my YouTube page. That's a great show. It's a really good show. And Ron, I, I believe Shelby reached out to you. He told me he was going to to get you on and work out the bookings. Well, first of all, I saw Shelby here the other night. Mm-hmm. Uh, he came in with, I guess, Race Wars. I gave him a big hug. He didn't say anything to me about it. And then, Gail, you gave him a big hug. Yes. Did you say anything to you about it? No, we didn't talk about that. We... Chris, you? Not a thing. Not a void. Now, is he on air with you at all, or is he just... I'll throw it to him once in a while. He reads yeah. it. We have a segment called uh, Hate Mail for Lewis. Yeah. So he just goes and finds all of the negative comments from Reddit. I like that And YouTube lot. and everything else. Yeah. And then they... Because they, I can't I can't go there anymore. I can't go on Reddit anymore and read the negativity. Mm-hmm. It seeps into my mind too much. So I have them do it, and I, they pick out the meanest ones. And then I have him read it in his shitty voice. The only time <laughs> I ever go to Reddit is to read bad stuff about you. Yeah. There's a lot not, of it. There's I, a lot. I didn't know there was anything else on there. So it's not just <laughs> bad stuff about Lewis. There's other Reddit stuff. Okay. All right. I just have never. I've always so exhausted by the time I got through that. Sure. My eyes are burning. I'm just like, I don't know what. Yeah, the quantity uh, alone. Yeah. So I, right, I got to look to see if there's anybody else on there. But um, so when are you doing. Th- now, what happens on Anthony's thing when Big J doesn't show? When he doesn't come into the show? Yeah. No, he's there. He's there mostly. Usually we try to pre-record if he can't be there. Right. Which is rare. We just went through like a month where both of us were really busy. I was in L.A. for a couple of weeks. He was out, uh, out on the West Coast as well. So there was a few shows where we weren't all there for. But I would say like 99% of the time we're all there. Um. Man, I am now on a, what do you call it, line with all these people worried about the person who's hurt, and I have no idea who it is. You still have no idea? No. Is there <clears throat> any people that you can recognize the numbers on there? Well, no, because I don't recognize numbers. I just put them in, and I'm locked in with it now. But it's not like I don't have a lot of diabetic friends. I do. One of them, of course, not Louis J. Gomez because he looks out for himself. Yeah. Real ass diet. Real ass diet. Yeah. He's a healthy guy. <clears throat> and, you know, uh, do you ever think of having Chris on any of these shows? I've asked him uh, uh, 400 times. Mm. Not, I mean, it's like I'm trying to book Sting. Mm. Well, the are you wrestler. About the wrestler. Yeah, yeah, he's yeah, not. Okay. Well, that's because he's up in the Raptors. <laughs> but <laughs> you actually cut a, a shitty Sting promo last night after the Mets lost. There was no promo. That was from the heart. That was yeah. legitimate feelings on Periscope and legitimate Hogan. fire. Hogan. Hogan. DeGrom. <laughs> that bomb DeGrom. My dirty cock will be avenged. <laughs> yeah. All from the heart. Yeah. I felt good about it. I felt good burning that fucking hat. You now, burned the Mets hat. Yeah. Yes, he did. Well, As we're Paris sitting Cup. here, right, uh, I, I see that Dan sent us something. It looks like during the show to have some people for a charity event, but it's for two days away. And even at the beginning of it, he goes, oh, I've known about this for a while. Uh yeah, well I sent in pre-show. I sent this in. Yeah, but, but why why would you not uh, give Chris more than forty-eight hours for something that is honestly important? 
That was my mistake. But uh, I we well, talked. Too busy eating sprouts to get to the bottom of it. I was very hungry. Yeah. for the past. How week long or so. have these people been waiting for an answer? Uh, I'm not sure when they started planning it. Maybe maybe a month. The people that yeah. So that well, you, they told you a month ago. Hey, could you get us on the show? We t- uh, we talked. We'd had some general meeting post show a while ago where I brought it up, but I should have put it in writing. Way it's your sooner. fault. Your fault, Ron. It's my fault. It's my fault. No, I should have put it in right. writing. Well, it's my fault. It's your fault. I, I let, I'm going to cancel guests to put them in because of this, but I want you to act like everything has gone well. And <laughs> the, <laughs> because when I when I read that, you know, it's it's a tough thing. I want to give them all the help in the world. Somebody's sick like that. But, um, you know, be the best case scenario yeah. if the person who's sick in your phone is the guest that we have to cancel. Oh, my <gasps> God. Weird. I think Isn't that's probably strange. True. So strange. It's like the Twilight Zone. Small world. I would love to change the name of the United States to the Twilight Zone. <laughs> that's perfect. <laughs> if, we could. if we were able to do that. Because I just feel like I could turn one corner and end up. In another dimension, you know? Yeah. It just feels like it's all going down that way. Just some place where just scary clowns live. Like, how did that happen? How did I get on this Twilight Zone? At the very least, singularity's happening, that's for sure. What do you mean by singularity? I don't entirely understand it, but I think it's when we all become one with robots and computers. Oh, is that uh, when robots take over? Or I think it's when we upload our our memories into... I think the, the idea is we're going to slowly but surely incorporate more and more technology into our lives to the point where it's going to be embedded into our bodies and our brains, so we're going to be part, like cyborgs. Yeah. Like That's right. the idea of like singularity, is that we become one with the machines. But Well, see, here's the thing, and then we're all the same machine, and we're just all moving around. It's not even up to yeah. us anymore. But I saw a thing last night on smart guns, right? So you grab a gun, and only you can use it. So if your kid grabs the gun, the trigger won't work. So this is a gun you'd like to have in your house, right? Sure. You cannot sell it anywhere in the United States because all the gun dealers are afraid of the NRA or whatever because they think this is a terrible idea, a smart gun. What's the what's the downside? The downside is then people will go, all the guns have to be smart guns. What's the downside of that? I don't know. I haven't figured that out. That way, children couldn't shoot each other. Yeah, it seems like if you were a gun owner, <laughs> yeah, one of the things you'd want is for other people not to shoot your gun. Dude, it I want to be like... able to pick up other guns. <laughs> <laughs> I want someone. If I, a friend wants to get my gun, he should be able to get my gun. I think the I, they almost go like, all right, where is it going to stop? Right. That that I think the argument because like I'm I'm completely against people being able to have guns. I think if you're going to kill somebody, make it fucking personal. Make it a, a butter knife. You know, get really get in there. No, have you ever debated Anthony on the? gun thing yeah i've talked to him better on the show he seems to be pro-gun really <laughs> yeah he <laughs> seems like he likes guns <laughs> but, but he even admitted that yeah big part of it he likes to go to shoot shit it's just people if they would just go hey right. dude i really like the powerful feeling that i have when i point it at something and shoot it and, and stop fun. bullshitting that it's about you know your your rights and and you know protecting yourself it's like no dude you don't we don't live in a society where you really need a gun to protect yourself. I like to shoot bottles and fill up uh, plastic courts and shoot them. Oh, yeah. And just the idea of it, because I feel like I'm a really good shot. And I probably stand closer than I need to. And I'm just, I mean, I'll shoot stuff from like a foot. <laughs> it's uh, exploded. Dude, I yeah, want, it's uh, really David, fun. Dave and Buster's, uh, I, I got, we played this game, got like 3,000 tickets, and I bought a crossbow, dart crossbow. It's just like a little like yeah. sticky darts. Dude, it's the f- most powerful feeling that I have. And I, I pointed at my friends and watched them squint. Yeah. You know how powerful that feels to make your friends squint? Yeah. A gun is like a hundred times that. So I get the feeling and I get, and I also understand being like, hey, dude, it's my right to have one and wanting to keep your gun. You know, I don't th- think the government should just come and take away your rights. But to say that you, I, I don't see any argument to not put some sort of res- or safety on a gun like that. I think it would only help and only save lives. Well, here's the thing with a smart gun. Let's say Anthony had a smart gun, so only his thumb has to be on this part of it, and then he could pull the trigger. Wouldn't I want to cut his thumb thumb off if I stole his gun? Smart. And isn't that going to mean a lot less thumbs? And then you glued the thumb onto your hand so you can use I'm the gun. I'm going to do that anyway. I'm going to do that anyway. Whether they're smart guns or not. Yeah. 
But see, anytime I get a gun, I'm with my friends. I start doing Pulp Fiction lines, and everyone's like, "Stop it!" <laughs> you yeah. know. I was. I've. I've only gone to. Uh, like a handgun range once, mm-hmm. and I was yelled at for holding it sideways. <laughs> we actually held it. Why would they get mad at you for gangster shit? I know. That's that so how I felt comfortable doing if it. Someone yelled at me. To, if I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna. I want to do it right. Sure. If someone's gonna yell at me at a gun range, I'm gonna sh- start shooting yeah. right no. around their feet. <laughs> Dance. Not, yeah. Make them dance as quick as you can. Yeah, who are you yelling at? Yeah. You're yelling at somebody with a fucking gun. Seriously. But I, I felt so uncomfortable in a handgun range. I, I shot a shotgun, like shooting, uh, what is it, skeet or whatever. Yeah. That was a blast. I thought that was really fun. Um, but handguns was really creepy to me. There's oh. something about handguns that's like really chilling where you're well, like, oh, this is not for sport or hunting. Yeah, just this kill. is made it's- to murder humans but i also when weird. i'm in a gun range i'm always scratched my nose with it like it's a puncture, <laughs> and everybody yells and stuff i I'm think like, they what? should do a retinal scan in the tip of the gun and that's, that's how it works yeah <laughs> that's interesting i think you should just tie the gun to your penis and just fucking <laughs> it around yeah, it's, it's an interesting point, though. It's like, yeah, handguns, they're made to kill humans. That's yeah. a weird, it's just so, all it is is a weird thing. Like you know? when I had a shotgun, I was thinking, okay, I was obviously thinking about safety and things yeah. like that. But when I was holding a handgun, the first thing I thought, what it was, I was like, oh, I could just turn around and yeah. murder the dudes standing next to me. Like, that doesn't happen all, as just, often as you think it would. You would assume that that would just be like when people want to just sure. kill people, just go to a handgun range. They hand you a gun and you just start shooting people. Most people aren't crazy. Yeah. Most yeah. people are not. I mean, I get the feeling I want to kill the, the side people too at a bowling alley. I'm like, I could take this, <laughs> this crush their <laughs> skull with it. But I mean, when you were here, like the other day, heard that there's 300 million guns in the country, right? I'm like, well, then we must be pretty fucking safe. Because you would think if with 300 million guns, There'd be something like 500,000 accidents a day. You would think <laughs> with that Considering. many. I mean, think how many cars we have out there and how many accidents do we have a day. So people are worse drivers than they are of uh, being gun safety people. Yeah. You know? And that's because there are less people who own guns. No. The more, the more guns in the hands of people. But you're against guns altogether. Just only because I look at myself and I'm like an angry dude and I'm, I don't think I'm a psychopath, but I think if I had a gun on me in my 33 years of my life, if I had a gun on me, there might have been a few times where I got into some shit and I would have pulled it out and who knows what the fuck would have happened. I'm like, not saying I'm not willing to kill somebody, but I'm saying I might have been willing to pull it out because I felt threatened or I wanted to threaten somebody else. And that Almost is never going to end good. So why should everybody be able to just grab a gun? Like if somebody's eating your Brussels sprouts, let's yeah. say. Put the fucking sprout down. <laughs> I wouldn't even talk. i just start shooting. Yeah. <laughs> Shoot the sprout right out of his fucking hand. <laughs> when it's going up to his mouth. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, they also described me like I like I charged toward the table, like I was angry and trying to fight them. Did you order those Brussels sprouts? <laughs> Maybe then you ordered this bullet for yourself. <laughs> Run! <laughs> Run out the back door. Um, <clears throat> people want to know that why you haven't coming up with some kind of a cheeseburger and Brussels sprouts, Jimmy Buffett parody yet? I know. Oh, I could. T- do that. I will do that. But you should be doing it right now. Okay. So we can have it Why don't you do it right this second and everything okay. would be great. All right. Brussels sprouts in paradise. Cheeseburgers. Cheeseburgers and Brussels sprouts. That's it. That's it. They get eaten. How's, uh, oh boy, here's I'm workshopping wants to it. talk to you. It's fuck. Uh-oh. Oh, boy. Hey, fuck. Lewis. Yeah. What's up, fuck? What's up, buddy? What's going on, buddy? Hey, when do you when do you play that 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 thing at the creek over there? With the uh, the podcast? Yeah, I want to come see it. Come see it uh, Tuesday night, every Tuesday night, nine o'clock. It's Tuesday, fuck. not Wednesday. Okay, it's Tuesdays. Yeah, fuck. That's what Long Island City over there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Is that is he threatening me, Ron? Sounds like he's kind of sounds. Like he's is that what he's doing? Threatened. He's saying he's going like to show he, up, like he knows where you are. <laughs> No, I just want to come say hi. That's all. I mean, see, fuck, this, this. You can go to GomezComedy.com and see where I'm at every night, along with all of my other enemies. You have to really give up on having dangerous enemies when you're a professional comedian. <laughs> sure. I just wanted to speak to you personally and ask, you know? What Listen, about? About where the show is. I would say this is a thing, weird. fuck. You know? This is, this, I, I offered to MMA fight fuck. I'll do it this year's Thanksgiving. 
Would you oh, like yeah. to do that fuck? Absolutely. All I've right. been training all year. All right. Now, I don't know whether we have to go through a commission or whatever, because I did this thing in D.C., and we ended up having two guys boxing. We had to pay a fucking boxing commit- commission for two fucking interns fighting each other. Had to bring a doctor in, qualified judges. Can we just call it a bar fight then? Because that's essentially what it'll be. <sighs> There's no bar fight commission. Fuck, you being a little disrespectful I'm trying yourself to be, right now. And I'm trying to be professional fuck. here. If we're going to do it, we might as well do it the right way, fuck. And we have doctors there just in case you get to hurt, hurt too bad. Well, why don't Who we just, we're going to do it that way. Let's do a gunfight. Because it's it. the only way that's going to settle this. We put these two smart guns in the center. We yeah. both grab them. We're either both dead or we both look stupid. <laughs> Wasn't that in RoboCop? I'm not going to ever see RoboCop. That'll never happen. The reboot? Yes, yes. Yeah. The so. reboot must have been bad because I didn't hear anything about it. Yeah, I heard nothing. Yeah. I forgot they even did a reboot. Yeah, who was in it, Chris? Do you remember? Michael Keaton. Was in it. And uh, I believe he was the Robocop. No, he was like an evil corporation. Head. <laughs> <laughs> That's your action hero. Sixty-year-old Michael Keaton. Uh, he hasn't seen sixty in a long time. <laughs> Some Bird, okay. Birdman. I'm like, when did he die? This was his follow-up to Birdman. <laughs> this is the Robocop reboot, and Sam Jackson is also in it. Who? Sam Jackson. Samuel. I L. thought he said Ann Jackson. Ann Jackson. Sam Jackson. Is fuck still there? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I gotta go, but Lewis, I'll be seeing you real soon, buddy. Uh, okay. All right. I, I feel threatened. I know. I, I know feel th- I feel threatened by fuck. And that makes me uncomfortable. I want to know you're safe. I'm gonna get Dan to walk you out. No, this is a safe zone. No, it, it isn't. Fuck. Fuck. How you doing? You staying clean? Oh yeah, I'm doing great. Good. Yeah, I miss you guys. I'm uh, I'm so busy with all this all this good life stuff. I barely have time to listen to the I'm show. I'm so anymore. busy not doing heroin. I can't see you guys anymore. But that's really it's does a, keep you a busy. Hard, it's a hard <laughs> life, man. Trying not to shoot dope. Oof. It really does keep you busier than you would think. <laughs> it consumes I just take the your day life. At a time, you know. <laughs> <laughs> all right, fuck. Talk to you later, buddy. Are you coming right, out you, uh, Thanksgiving? I don't know. I'm still waiting to hear from Pepper. Oh, no email and Pepper. The Wait, lottery's how, going on. What about the you cut no lie with Lily yesterday, Pep? There was there was no lie with Lily, none whatsoever. I told Wait. her, "Hey, come by." Never heard back from her. Hold on a minute. I need to be in the lottery. That's what he's saying. What the fuck? Do, don't you know who I am? Yeah, oh, I know see. who you are, bro. Dude, you know who has don't never said, me, don't bro. you know who I am? Anyone important has never <laughs> said that in their Seriously, life. do you know who I am? Bro, Google me. <laughs> All right, I got to go. I'll see you, buddy, soon. All right, enjoy your meeting. Will you? <laughs> he was but, last year at Thanksgiving. He was very he was very threatening. He was very aggressive. Yeah. But the thing about Louis J. Gomez, he was like, good. Good. I kind of liked it. You're going to come over here and hurt me. Good. Let's see it. <laughs> I really, he, he was, when he shook my hand at the end, he shook it so hard with like, right. Like he was so like ready to fucking go. He's he's a damaged kid. I like him though. I, I, he kind of yeah, reminds me of me. Yeah, he's, <laughs> he's another reason why people shouldn't be able to have guns. Yeah. The uh, there are so many different fucking people that will do that thing of like they threaten, but in a nice way. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Like your house, it's made out of wood, right? Very flammable. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Very flammable. <laughs> Oh, yeah, hey, 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 hey. the brakes that? work on your car, right? Yeah. That's cool. Huh? How's your hypertension? Is it okay? Huh? <laughs> Why are you asking about my hypertension? <laughs> so you're trying to stay away from sweets now, are you? Because of the diabetes? <laughs> <laughs> you think diseases are going to kill you slowly? Yeah, right. <laughs> I guess you wouldn't like it if a little sugar baby showed up in your mouth. <laughs> oh, that's not water. Get it in there. Yeah. Yeah. Your mouth is such, such a nice... Oh, seems like a Hershey bar would fit right inside. Right? <laughs> 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 All right, we got to wrap this one up, though. Plug away. Louis J. Gomez is our favorite because he remembers yes. us. None of the other skanks have time for us anymore. I know. Uh-uh. No. Yeah. Well, guess what? Louis J. Gomez is in studio and he's headlining 
at Levity Live in West Nyack, New York, on Thursday, November 5th at 7.30 p.m. You go to LevityLive.com for tickets. On Twitter, it's at Louis J. Gomez. And the, the Bleasness Skanks Live, 9 p.m. every Tuesday and Wednesday on AnthonyCumia.com. And the Real Ass Podcast, go to StandUpNYLabs.com. So you're doing three podcasts a week now. Wow. Yeah, do three podcasts a week. Plus, I'm uh, starting the, the Michael Bisping Show. I'm the lead host on uh, Rush 93. Here at Sirius XM. So we don't have a date on that yet, but uh, it's officially a go weekly with Michael Bisping, who's a current UFC 185 pound. That's going to be a lot of fun for you, That's right? Awesome. Yeah. Going to be a lot of fun. Yeah. Huge fan of the sport. And, uh, he's fucking great, dude. He's like, uh, he's like a, just a an alpha ball busty British guy. Mm-hmm. Like it's, it's great, dude. Nice. Great. All right. That's it for us. See you guys again in 1974. Ladies and gentlemen, the evening is over. We hope you all enjoyed yourselves, and we'll see you all again in 1974. Good evening! <laughs>